scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When you pray in the spirit, you open up your spirit man Shaba katos kate la kata branda katos ya. E brande kapa rakush kati la kata branda katos ya ta. Im brande kete la katos ya ta balada bakatos. Shafranta kapa rakush kate brande kete balados. Kapa rakush shaba katos kati kretos ya ta balahas kada balita. Embreteke paratos kate bratos yata. Shete berekete balakata balusi. Manda prandas kata barashko de bres kate berekato safrati yata balalabos. Embrantes kate la parusha na kas kati yata hasabranda gadabos. Shene menekato parakato siya. Embra kata barandos kate la kafres sete kate berekato brandos yata. Neke parus kata brandas kata le kata brus lebege lebege lebe la kata us. Awesome God, how great Thou art! You alone. Mighty heart, standing on of your holy name, and Lord, we bow and worship. Hallelujah! Please be seated. May the Lord bless you. Luke chapter eighteen and verse one. Let's start from there. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus was teaching and his character in his teaching ministry was to use parables um, when he was teaching to a mixed multitude he would usually use parables to explain the mysteries of the kingdom and this was a parable the bible says luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to this intent or to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint so jesus here whatever else he's saying is to buttress on this point showing the power of prayer that men ought always pray and not to faint he encourages all men to pray not men in trouble not men in need he says the moment you realize you are a man it is part of the requirements to remain alive part of the requirements to remain effective he says all men not men in need not men in trouble God never prayed as God but when God became a man, 
he prayed there is no record of God praying as God but when he became a man in the person of Jesus he prayed even though the word he prayed and today because he ascended to heaven and he's seated as a man he still continues to pray making intercession for the saints prayer is for men not men in need not men in need of power not men in distress prayer is for men the idea that prayer is just an emergency strategy to solve problems is the reason why most believers are prayerless because the narrative that has been sold to believers for many years is that prayer is just an emergency mechanism that helps you to solve problems you see that in my opinion the highest expression of humility is to be prayerful prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the assistance of heaven when men pray it is an expression of deep humility before God in recognition that unassisted and by yourself we do not amount to much are we together so he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint second scripture Luke chapter 11 Jesus was confronted by his disciples over the subject of prayer and the Bible says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray so you don't just pray you are taught to pray effective prayer comes from a sound teaching ministry to understand the dynamics of prayer that produces power he said teach us to pray Luke 11 and verse 1 just as John taught his disciples to pray now you must understand that in this scripture they were not prayerless people the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was inefficiency in prayer they noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed that produced power and produced results they were not prayerless they were they were not confronting the issue of prayerlessness they were prayerful people but their prayer was not producing results can I tell you it is impossible to remain indefinitely prayerful in the presence of consistent lack of results if you keep praying and praying and it does not produce results eventually your fire and your fervor will dwindle when people pray and their prayer commands results it is difficult for people to become prayerless under that condition the reason why our churches have people frowning at anything prayer is because subliminally over the years they have learned that this kind of prayer does not work so their refusal to come for prayer meetings is just a polite way of saying i do not believe in this hallelujah he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and now the disciples confronted him and they said teach us to pray let's see what he taught them in response to that question and he said unto them when ye pray this must be your approach to prayer are we ready now number one our father He's teaching how to pray and he's saying in approaching prayer the first thing is you must understand the person you are speaking to the revelation of the person you are speaking to can determine the entire construct of your prayer life he says when you approach God in prayer you must realize that he is our father the word father comes from the Greek word Abba it means source it means sustainer it means defender it means protector that means in approaching prayer if you have plan B then he's not Abba 
abba means you must approach him with the consciousness that i do not have any other option i come to you as my source the source there does not just mean the beginning the originator that when you pray he's not just saying recite this as a chant he's saying approach prayer with this consciousness number one our father you are abba the fatherhood of god is is a very powerful component in effective prayer you must understand the fatherhood of god and jesus himself was teaching us about fatherhood and he said if you been evil remember that scripture matthew 7 from verse 7 when he was teaching on prayer ask and it shall be given seek you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you and he said for everyone that asketh receiveth for him that knocketh it shall be opened is that true and then and he says or what man is there of you of whom his son asked bread and he will give him a stone he's confronting fatherhood now or if you ask for a fish he will give him a serpent verse 11 if ye then being evil do you know what he's saying he's saying by your nature you are evil and wicked people but even in that depth of wickedness there is still a provision to honor fatherhood that as wicked as you are you still have that sense of compassion that when your children confront you you can be excited to do them good even though you are wicked people then he says how much more shall your father so god's definition of father is not just one who has a son is one who is quick to give the ease of release is one of his definitions of fatherhood are we learning now so that when you approach prayer the fatherhood the consciousness of the fatherhood of god will give you the audacity to know that you will receive you can confront a deity and you are not sure as to his intent with respect to your request but he's saying this god you are approaching is father everybody say father one more time say father it is very powerful the fatherhood of god if you being evil know how to give good gifts so when i approach god in prayer i am not praying to the warrior i am not praying to the lion of the tribe of judah he is all that but he is father are we together there are men here who are multi-dimensional all men a man can be a pastor a man can be a businessman a man can be and whatever dimension you approach is a dimension that is revealed to you are we together if i want to meet the ceo i have to go through the protocol of meeting the ceo and while i'm queuing in annoyance hoping for a chance to see him a young boy will run and pass everybody and run because he's not going to meet a ceo he's going to meet father are we together number two we're still examining luke 11 our father the second revelation on prayer that jesus taught them is which art in heaven that means in approaching effective prayer you will need faith because it's in a dimension that is not physical are we together now that understand that even though he's your father there is you are operating from a duality of realms you will on you will need to understand the component that connects the invisible and the visible our father who is not physically here with me that means i will need to understand faith in dealing with him you must approach that father in faith because you are dealing with a reality that is beyond the realm and the scope of science how am i sure that he's hearing me faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 he says for without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must come having this consciousness number one that he is he exists and then number two he is a rewarder it's not what he does it's his name he is a rewarder he is he exists are we together then number three hallowed be your name i just want to touch on this very quickly and then we'll pray 
hallowed be your name that means don't get too familiar with his fatherhood that you forget that that father is still god you must approach with the spirit of reverence do not allow the consciousness of his fatherhood make you abuse it because you see even though he is your father he is god the consciousness of the fatherhood of god can give room for a lot of carelessness even in prayer like you see a lot of believers do but he said you must keep that component of reverence that even though he's your father he is god hallowed be your name the word hallow means to revere your office the name there means his office even though you are father i come with regard and reverence to that office then number four he says thy kingdom come this is powerful he's teaching them how to pray that in your prayer now he's beginning to make if you ever will ask anything it is that your kingdom come you know what this means the kingdom here refers to the fullness of the life the culture the sphere the kingdom represents every physical territory or every geographic definition where the influence of a king has been allowed to find expression it is called his kingdom so he says in prayer you must desire ultimately that his kingdom his culture his life his government let it come and he says let it come in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you you see that now that earthen vessel he says when you pray you must desire that your life becomes an effulgence of the culture the lifestyle of heaven your kingdom come your will be done this is how his kingdom comes everywhere his will is done his kingdom has come you see that now the kingdom of god the manifestation of the kingdom of god depends on his will being done everywhere his will is allowed to find expression his kingdom is made manifest in my life as the first earth and then my territory do you know why he's teaching you this he's teaching you that i know you have a lot of prayer requests but the reason why you even have prayer requests in the first place is the absence of the reality of the kingdom that if the revelation of the kingdom in experience finds expression you will not even need to ask the things you are about to ask that i will answer them but ultimately it is for your kingdom to come and your will being done and you will not need to talk about rent again you will not need to talk about trusting god for some miracle somewhere that those things are side effects of the kingdom not finding expression is someone learning now yes thy kingdom come how by your will being done in my life and in my territory then he says give us this day it tells you how powerful god's giving character is that he gives daily now let me tell you this it takes a lot of love to give daily to the same person he says do not be afraid have this consciousness that god is a giver but look at the extent of his giving he gives daily the government pays people monthly businesses pay people monthly investments pay people quarterly and annually but he's saying you are approaching a father who is a giver and the structure of his giving is that he gives daily that means just because he gave yesterday do not be afraid to ask again he is not going through insufficiency give us daily our daily bread you know what your daily bread is your daily bread is not food your daily bread is everything that makes for your efficiency per day everything the favor you need the relationships you need all of them are called your daily bread the purpose of bread is to keep you alive and fresh so all of the components i need within my space to make for my efficiency per day finances relationships are we together the engracing the favor give us our daily bread very powerful prayer is someone learning god gives and he gives daily 
give us our daily bread now this is a very powerful one and he says forgive us verse 4 our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us i wish i had time to deal with this he's saying you must understand that this same father is so benevolent it is within his power and with joy and excitement to grant you forgiveness for anything that can give satan a legitimate ground to accuse you and that while you do that reserve that consciousness and apply the same rule in dealing with men are we together now he said forgive us our trespasses the word there is not necessarily sin is the word trespasses our defaulting that which comes by reason of wearing a human body the limitations that come by reason of being human that in as much as we desire to walk in accuracy and perfection the fact that we are still evolving through transformation we will find ourselves defaulting not walking in perfect keeping with your principles and he's saying we are aware that you have created a provision in our dealing with you where your mercy would always prevail and he says that while we enjoy that reserve this in our consciousness that as we deal with people we will also meet people who are weak and limited that means when you pray effectively it leaves you with a responsibility also that the same way the father committed benevolence towards you you must be apt to communicate same to others forgive us our sins or trespasses for we also forgive all that are indebted to us and then it says lead us not into temptation king james did not do justice there because god does not tempt people with evil the bible says it looks like he's saying lead us not into temptation he's saying build a garrison around us and refuse to allow us by any means get into anything that would tempt us for our destruction that's the original expression of it it's not to lead like to woo you no god does not tempt any man with evil when he says lead us not into temptation he's saying create it is within your power to create a structure that defends us from moving into temptation he says nothing shall by any means hurt you you have to examine all the means that are available nothing shall by any means hurt you are we learning and then deliver us from evil then you read on so jesus was helping them to understand the formation of prayer that you pray to your father you pray by faith you approach him with the spirit of reverence and then that when you are praying your focus listen carefully your focus should not just be your needs your focus should be that his kingdom would find expression in your life because in truth i tell you when the kingdom comes and finds expression in your life by his will being done you will still remain prayerful but you will hardly have prayer requests again because when the kingdom comes like one of my dear people will say it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life so that at the end of your prayer life all that will be left is worship no more petitions because the kingdom has become the ultimate answer to those petitions are we blessed now let me just share with us and then we'll pray i've studied a bit on the subject of prayer and i found out that most believers really do not understand the purpose of prayer why is prayer such an important requirement to the believer why does god mandate us to pray why do we need to pray what is the assignment and the jurisdiction of the prayer ministry to the believer you see one of the ways that we gain stability in the kingdom is through understanding if i ask you for instance my dear people here if i ask you to sit down and just remain there as an instruction you will do it because you love me but you will be frustrated because there is no revelation that supports what you are doing it will become a burdensome ritual for you but if i ask you to sit down here because i've given someone a signal that when he comes whoever he finds sitting down here he should bless you the awareness of that revelation will give you the staying power to remain 
are we together now you understand what i'm saying so just merely telling people to pray will only make people loyal to a man of god or loyal to a religious sect but once you give them the revelation to see the necessity of prayer and the assignment of prayer let me tell you this it will surprise you to know this and i thank god that this is a ministry that is strong in revelation prayer is a major foundational key in this kingdom but it is not the only key i hope you know that by now jesus said i will give you the keys of the kingdom so the prayer ministry has its jurisdiction and it has its assignment but prayer was so constructed i i would always use this expression that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key so in any case you will still need to pray are we together but to just believe that prayer alone will solve all problems it may not be accurate because there are keys that are given in this kingdom are we together this auditorium has a number of doors as i can see just because you have the key to say the restroom does not mean you have the key to the office is that true if you need to use the restroom you'll be happy because you have the key that opens it but if you need to use the office then you are stranded although you are holding a key africa being a very superstitious and religious cont continent we have a lot of regard for prayer and we do all kinds of things that we call prayer and we expect prayer to evolve into any key we need to open many doors and sadly we stand stranded before doors because we only have one key um, i'm going to be teaching you on the assignment the jurisdiction of prayer but then i want you to understand in truth wisdom is a key relationship is a key prayer is a key are we together he when he gives you the keys of the kingdom then you handle these keys and you can open the various doors that need to be opened as far as your life and your destiny is concerned but now since we're dealing with the subject of prayer i want to show you something very powerful that the lord showed me um, from scripture what is the assignment of prayer and what is the jurisdiction of prayer i found from scripture that there are about four or five major assignments of prayer in the life of a believer let's run through them as we pray number one luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the first assignment of prayer and in order of priority this is about the most important assignment of the prayer ministry in the life of a believer transformation the real assignment of prayer in the life of a believer is not requests a means for obtaining requests the primary assignment of the prayer ministry is the spiritual mechanism that evolves you to superior dimensions of yourself so you can evolve to a dimension of you that was not yesterday the weak you can become the strong you the timid you can become the powerful you the undiscerning and carnal you can become the spiritual you and the process midwifing that the former you and this new you is prayer it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings that he took peter and john and james and the bible says he went into a mountain to pray are we together now verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed are you observing this the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening through prayer this is what prayer achieves in the life of a believer transformation that happens through prayer believe me no matter what is wrong with your life subject yourself constructively to the ministry of prayer and watch yourself evolve into levels that will surprise you i have seen weak people become strong through consistent prayer i've seen people without discernment grow into certain appreciable levels of handling the gifts of the spirit and that's through prayer 
everybody say transformation yes. transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience It's called transformation the process that makes you become like Christ in experience he says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you you can pray wrong things out of your life you can pray the virtue of the spirit to be at work in your life number two why do we pray prayer is the authorized platform as revealed from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises that every time you desire to make requests and to obtain promises the authorized the scriptural platform to make this happen is prayer mark 11 and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith then he said this therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray in prayer he says believe that thou receivest them so we receive in prayer and then you shall have it i'm sure that you know that there is a difference between receiving and having you only have what you have received you cannot have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual reality and then having is the physical manifestation you only have what you have received are we together very important the bible says when you pray among the many things that should happen in your prayer is that you receive everything god has given you receive in prayer and then you can have it philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 gives us the biblical cure for anxiety he says be anxious the word there is not careful the word there is anxious be anxious for nothing he says but in everything that means the prayer ministry covers every aspect of your life there is no aspect of your life that prayer cannot cover in everything he says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known have you read that in your bible he never said to assume that god knows let your request let the rent issue let the family issue let the issue in your job be made known unto god be anxious for nothing he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known next verse and the peace of god this is one of the ways god answers prayers peace is a voice when he speaks his answer comes in peace he will speak peace to his people he says the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through jesus christ so we see that the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is to make requests and to obtain promises number three why do we pray what is the purpose of prayer in the life of the believer are you ready for decrease and for creation hmm. prayer is the scriptural platform that gives the believer an opportunity to make decrease and to create possibilities in your life that it is possible to make to be what was not through the power of decrease and that in prayer this is very very powerful job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 it says that you will also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you who is the you the one who made the decree not the one who needs the result the one who made the decree you shall also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you so light will shine on your ways numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 
numbers 14 1 4 and then 28 say unto them as i leave saith the lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will i do unto you just as you have spoken just as you have spoken can i tell you it is not only god you speak to you speak to things in prayer the character of faith according to the pauline revelation is that is in the similitude of how god behaves and that he can call things to be that were not he can call things and make things to appear that were not decrease and creation i hope you realize that creation has not stopped you would not be an effective christian to believe that creation has stopped mm -mm. the fact that god rested does not mean creation stopped we can make things to appear that is not my goodness this is powerful we can make things to appear that is not we can call things we can call realms we can call dimensions we can call possibilities that is not yet within your space you don't need to look for them what you are looking for is also looking for you you just need to know how to call it to you hallelujah in prayer you can make decrees in prayer you can create possibilities right from where you are you can create a life of beauty and a life of glory in prayer this is very powerful it's an advantage that puts everybody at the same position that regardless my limitations territorially regardless my limitations by reason of my background the prayer ministry if understood can veto those limitations and call into my life something i was not born with and call into my life something my certificate did not carry i can call possibilities into my life you have to believe this so there is no need you see this was what apostle james was teaching and we'll wrap up with that one he said from whence come wars and rumors of wars and all of these things he says it comes from the loss that is in your heart it comes as a token of the frustration you have for not having results and he said it is unnecessary because everyone can ask and receive so there is no need to be jealous there is no need to be angry at another man's result there is a possibility to also attract same to your life hallelujah even god who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not hold on he never said the things that do not exist be not means it's not within your frame of sight every single bone from the army that disintegrated in ezekiel 37 was still there but it was just scattered beyond the scope of sight under a certain condition it came back not every condition listen to me under a certain condition everything can come your assignment is to use prophetic words to direct your results and your answers to your place when you make decrees listen carefully when you make decrees and you create possibilities and the raw material for that creation is the word of god remember the bible says john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning and then verse 3 says that all things how many things all things it didn't say all spiritual things it says all things that means the unit of every physical material is not an atom it is the word of god science has only exhausted itself all things were made by him and he said without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made So I can call to my life 
when you look at me all you see is not all there is there are some things coming there are some things coming and it is not only things you call you can call realms you can call dimensions you can call spiritual qualities to come to your life believe me this is true you can call the ministry of men to your life the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent with his word he didn't need to find out where joseph was he sent and they brought him out of his dungeon if the king sent for joseph there are things you need to send for listen 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 when jesus needed to have a triumphant entry he could not go at that state and he gave an instruction he said go to a city whose road divide you will find something there that is for me lose it and let it come and if they ask you what is your audacity tell them the king had need of it there are things you have need of for your triumphant entry and you must learn how to call it forth and let it be loosed and come to you if they ask you tell them the king had need of it I hope you believe what you are hearing yes. how do you think ordinary men rise there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you a guarantee as a man of God that I will come to your church nobody gives you a guarantee that I will help you vain is the help of a man if God does not instruct them can I tell you waiting for things to just happen by default will recycle pain in your life you can call things everything has an ear biology misled us even though we respect it to say there are living and non-living things interesting everything is alive it depends on who is speaking everything is alive it depends on who is speaking there were other people who spoke and the bones were quiet but the prophet said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound can call forth health you can call forth resources you can call forth all kinds of things you can call forth ravens from wherever they are to come and meet you at Brook Cherith listen when you know this your prayer life becomes exciting because it is sponsored by an understanding lose that cold and if they ask you because someone will ask you based on what is this result coming your reply should be the king had need of it he said when I sent you lackest thou anything are we learning let's finish up to pray in fact let me stop here and just show us three hindrances to effective prayer based on the revelation that apostle james gave us let's just look at it quickly and then we'll pray apostle james began to teach us in james chapter 4 please pay attention now james chapter 4 and verse 3 james 4 and verse 3 let's start from verse 1 for sake of um, clarity now here's what he's saying apostle james is teaching us on prayer from whence come wars and fightings among you he's challenging wars fightings and all of these things he says come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members the word lost there in this context is not a demonic thing or a satanic thing the, the word there simply desires 
that there is you have a desire a craving for something you want to see certain things happen in your life because you see psychologically speaking one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive you are moving forward you will find fulfillment if at any point you find yourself stagnated it has an effect on you so he's saying from whence come your frustrations and all of that is it not among the lost that war in your members verse 2 ye lost desire now and have not and your desperation even gets you to a point where you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not simply because ye ask not he's saying there is no reason to fight there is no reason to covet and be angry at another person's testimony it's unnecessary it's, it's an insult to the benevolence of god he's saying when you hear that god is doing something there's no reason being angry as if it was only one left and it was given to another he said the only reason why you do not have is that you do not ask then verse 3 he now begins to give us the template for effective prayer and what to guard against he says ye ask so there are people who have done the asking and yet receive not he teaches us that it is possible in your prayer life to ask and yet not receive and he tells you why he says because ye ask amiss everyone say amiss he uses a very interesting word amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust one more scripture and then i'll build together what he has said a miss there means with wrong motives that means your motive is already corrupted for desiring it are we together even though you are asking but hidden within your heart is a corrupted motive james chapter one same james chapter one from verse five to seven james chapter one from verse five to seven Here's what he says. He's dealing with the issue of lack and how to want every time you lack. If any of you lack, not just wisdom, he's teaching on lack. How to get when, the mo when you find out that, that you are in lack. If any of you lack, he says the cure for lack is to ask of God. He was speaking with respect to wisdom, but it is not limited to wisdom if any of you lack wisdom he says let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men and how much does he give god gives to all men and he gives liberally and upbraided not he says and it shall be given to him verse 6 reading to 7 he says but let him ask in faith this is another condition nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed seven serious tragedy here for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord so apostle james gives us three reasons why prayers are not answered number one asking amiss you know what it means to ask amiss to ask amiss means to ask outside of the provision of his will to ask without a scriptural backing this is where ineffective prayer comes most people just pray superstitious prayers most believers pray communicating lamentations and just because they've dissipated energy in praying amiss they believe that because of the time they will be heard to ask amiss means to pray outside of his will he said this is the confidence that we have apostle john now was teaching us that when we ask anything in accordance to his will he hears us his will means his word listen to me wordless prayer is prayer that is unanswered god is touched by the feelings of our infirmity but he responds only to his word you have to understand this there are no sentiments when it has to do with exalting the word of god because he has exalted the word even above his office 
he chose to submit to the word so when you pray an emotional prayer it will only comfort you because you are expressing your pain but there is no answer guaranteed from scripture the first assignment of a believer therefore in approaching prayer is knowledge not praying knowledge so that the things you are asking for will be in accordance to the will of god the guarantee that god will answer you is that you are praying consistent with scripture most believers do not pray in accordance to scripture most believers i can tell you this for free most with all due respect and honor most ministries do not pray approaching the prayer ministry with intention and with spiritual intelligence derived from scripture and so we find out that we keep saying a lot of things and dissipating energy and we hardly receive answers to prayer the margin of energy that is dissipated in prayer versus the result that comes is so small and it's not motivating enough this was the frustration of the disciples teach us to pray there's something about our prayer life we can't keep shouting and yelling and rolling around and like as though we are the prophets of Baal there is something about the accuracy of your prayer that for every time you dissipate energy there are results that justify it can I tell you the truth I believe that is in the heart of your man of God that for every time you come here praying that by the next time even if it's morning and night the distance between morning and night you should return with strange results that you stand here and say what happened I don't I, I know I said this in the morning and by evening God has taken five months and put it in one day can I tell you every time you receive real results you become too grateful to be quiet the greatest motivation for evangelism is personal results read your bible the madman in gadara the woman at the well every time people obtain genuine personal results they were too grateful even when they were instructed don't tell anybody how do I hide that God lifted me? How do I hide that I've entered another realm? How do I hide that the favor of God is upon me? Can that be hidden? Evangelism was supposed to be a byproduct of consistent results in the life of the believer. Let me repeat. Evangelism was designed by the intelligence of God to be a byproduct of consistent result your audacity in inviting people is based on your personal testimony come see a man who had told me it's not a suggestion come see a man I'm, I'm calling you with a guarantee and when they came to Jesus they came because the woman asked them to come but when they encountered him they said now we believe not just because you brought us paraphrasing we have seen him for ourselves I'm agreeing with your man of God in prayer that beginning from tonight that you will shift to another dimension of results in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you do not downplay the power of results do not downplay the power of results the end of any argument is results results that are derived from Scripture because how they come is also how they are maintained are we together praying amiss means to pray without a scriptural backing without faith with wrong motives that in approaching prayer you must approach prayer knowing this that if i pray with a wrong motive a motive that does not seek to bring glory to the Lord through that result it is within the power of God based on my motive as an act of his mercy to deny me that answer it is not every denial to answer that is demonic or satanic there are many prayers that are not answered because God loves you he's not answering the prayer is proof that he's determined that you grow 
because an heir the bible says for as long as he's a child that he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all no matter how you love your child you would not take the key to your car and give a six seven year old child so there are certain times that prayers answers to prayers are withheld and God accelerates your maturity to gain the stature that can have that because you see there are certain results that when God gives you in your life he must train you on how to maintain them it will bring attacks it will bring jealousy you must be fortified with the spiritual understanding to maintain certain realms of result before it comes when God suddenly gives you a hundred million or one billion naira you will be surprised at the attacks that had no business coming to you that will fish you out wherever you are because of what has happened you don't need to look for anybody's trouble if we are living in the world of men the whole world lies in wickedness so before God will commit that dimension of wealth to you he will have to train you to know how to put the full armor of God so that you can withstand all the wiles of darkness are we together there are people who God gave one million and we didn't see them in church again. They ran away, did all kinds of things until it finished and then they run back because you see every time you forget your source, remember Abba. The prodigal son for as long as he was with his father, there was no lack. The day he left, lack began. He depleted until he was eaten with swine. He said how many hired servants as my father and i'm here feeding with the swine he says i will arise and i will go back to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he met his father there was restoration the signet ring was put on him again the robe of royalty came upon him and a fatted calf was killed for him hallelujah we are going to pray. And in this moment of prayer, I'm going to challenge us to take seriously our time of prayer. We are going to pray in the spirit. And as we pray, pray with this understanding that in prayer, you are evolving. You are evolving you know how a snake molts there's something called molting when a snake wants to leave his former self into a newer self it will subject itself through the process of molting it will shed off the old skin so when you look at the size of the old skin that is no longer the size of the new snake that is the former self the confused you can pray into the circumspect you the weak you can pray into the strong you the favorless you can pray into the you that has favor like Jabez you can pray oh that thou wouldest bless me the Bible says the mother cursed him she named him after her pain because I bore you in sorrow but he came to a point where he had to change that narrative. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. I can tell you stories of what the prayer ministry has done in my life. Hmm. Let me tell you a little story. Pastor Sam, when the Lord asked me to come to Abuja from Zaria, I, I fought with God for years because I said, Lord, I don't want, I'm not sure that I'm ready for this. Let me just remain there in peace. I'm not, I'm not sure that I want to come and do ministry in Abuja. I understand how expensive the life is, the complexity of, I'm, I don't, I'm not ready for all of these stories. I just want to remain there to serve the Lord peacefully. Finally, when I came, I remember just looking around and saying where in the world do you start from and then I remembered that in prayer we can make manifest the things that are not listen carefully the Lord gave me an instruction 
to go and get the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. These four. And for a period of six months, gratefully for the pandemic, I looked at the local governments and I found out there were six local governments in this city. And I laid my hands and I began to pray. And I remember a time came in prayer. I don't know what it is that happened to me. Abuja became small. I, I don't mean to be arrogant. I, I, you understand? I sincerely I, I looked at it and it suddenly, you know how like you're looking at a child playing. I said, what is the population in this city? And it suddenly became small. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Prayer with power deflates challenges. Because every challenge comes in its magnified form. It takes the prayer ministry to deflate it to its true size. It is the character of Satan to magnify simple things. And make it, how will I get this one billion? How will I get this? How will this happen? When I looked at it, I said, this is it. This is not, this is not. There was something that he did to my mind. And it was in prayer. Laying my hands and speaking. And I said, Lord, now I agree with you. And the rest, to God be the glory. So I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables, my dear people. Every man you see who God has helped and shown mercy with any kind of exploit, it didn't just come just by dressing and speaking English. No. Your prayer ministry is your control room where you play life like a chess. When everything is done from there, then you come out. And you begin to watch things gravitate with a charm-like quality towards you. And you are wondering, what is all this? Everybody to help you, believe me, based on the intelligence we get from scripture is within your vicinity. Help us, don't just come. They are called. You can pass them every day and they do not even know. The Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath. That means Elijah passed some. But there was a woman. Only God knows what that woman was doing. Don't assume he just went to her. God cannot isolate one widow out of so many and send a prophet to her. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we, you see, it's good to give testimonies, but sometimes testimonies can be misunderstood. That's why most times men of God just keep quiet and they don't want to say things because people misunderstand it for pride and all of these things but i can tell you this if you understand the ministry of word-based prophetic prayer you will change your life like night and day you will marvel and wonder listen for some of you right now in all honesty it may be that nothing physical has happened in your life and you are spending your time praying with intelligence and someone asks you what do you do for a living and you say nothing think again nothing you spend time praying and they ask you what do you do and you say nothing nothing what do you have in your house she said nothing except when you spend time praying and calling for things let me tell you you did the same thing and better than an engineer who is working with a construction company was doing because that's exactly what you were doing you spent your day building and creating something that is about to manifest I hope you know that everything is built twice. 
it is first built in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests so the next time you spend time praying and you say nothing think again I'm saying this because we're about to pray and as you pray in the spirit and as you stretch in the spirit I want you to use your imagination because there are two prayer warriors one is you the other is your mind they are all prayer warriors and God answers both he says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think your thinking is praying too so don't just use your mouth and keep your brain your mouth can be saying lord bring this blessing and your thinking is saying god forget about it you will answer both your mouth and your thinking must be effective prayer warriors your mind must participate in your prayer hallelujah deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to do and observe all his commandments which i command you this day it says that the lord your god will exalt you above all the nations how many nations all the nations this is not a parable it was a literal statement when i read the bible i believe it i truly believe it Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Listen, as it rises on us, distant shores and the islands will see your light. Right from where you are, you can lift up your eyes. And begin to see the possibilities that are contained in scripture a life of dignity and honor and glory a life that is invincible results like chariots following you the good hand of God and his mercy upon your life it is from that standpoint you approach Abba in prayer and then now the Bible gives us the advantage in the person of the Holy Spirit he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth I will not leave you comfortless he says I will send one who will walk with you in this journey for the Bible says we have a limitation and the limitation he calls it our infirmity in Romans chapter 8 he says for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to that means he, God recognizes the fact that our growth is gradual but there are things you need now you may not have all the knowledge banked to to engage effectively the Holy Ghost comes as an advocate as an intercessor who can pray the will of the Father accurately through you the Bible calls him a helper and that he can help our infirmity the word infirmity there is not sickness it is the limitations that come by reason of wearing a mortal body are you ready to pray we're going to take a few minutes and please give your destiny an undivided attention as you pray do not allow the devil distract you forget about whatever bills whatever issues and let us join in prayer the fervent effectual prayer there is such a description to prayer as fervent and effectual of the righteous man availed much are you ready to pray please open your mouth and begin to pray whatever position you find comfortable just make sure you pray just make sure you pray Shalima Rasko Branda Katapratike de Belekatosia. Shapakato Sata Brandeke de Balakosia Tabalandasia. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Mante Kaparataska de Bretake Lekatosia Tabahashia. 
Zapraskate rashkada balanta baranteska de baliata. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Alanda salakata preska di la kaparuyas. Ebreka de belakatos kote branda sharakata balakatos. Pray. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue and defieth himself, and defieth himself. Shana makata paratas kata branda ke paratos yata. Ebra kosh kati la parianda preske di balasia da bakatos. Shimanakatabariakatush Leke pros, leke te brandos koto bete ko shige de belege da. Shibenia shabarata kata branda kata balaka tosia. Imbreke te parus kati laka parus ya tege de belege tosia. Shana meleke te petos kata branda kata paro kata shakete. Imbreke tos koto protos kote leke te branda kata balaka tosia. Shemanda kata prosko to balika prada da kapalia da balagatos. Shade baka paratos kati bande prada kate belagatos. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen carefully, please. We are praying now. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching and he made a very profound statement. He called Satan the thief. He says, The thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we together? So he reveals to us that Satan can steal, Satan can kill, and Satan can destroy. Now let me connect it to a mystery and then we'll pray. In Matthew chapter 21, please, give us verse 13. Matthew 21 and verse 13. This was when Jesus came into the temple. When he came into the temple, the Bible says he met people doing business within the temple is that true they were exchanging in the temple and he was angry and the bible says he began to whip them there were a few people there called money changers their job was to exchange you would bring something and they would exchange all that was happening in the temple so when jesus came he threw everything down and he made a statement that will be our prayer point now he said my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves listen carefully do you know what he's saying he's saying at every point his house is one of two things either a house of prayer or a place where thieves are carrying out exchanges and that house is you you that temple of the holy ghost he said at every point in your life you are either a house of prayer or there are exchanges going through in your life my house shall be called a house a temple of prayer failure to be a temple of prayer it was lack of prayer in the temple that gave access for exchangers exchangers of destiny exchangers of all kinds of things is someone ready to pray i'd like you to pray and find that house 
back to a place of prayer my house this temple is a house of prayer that means the ministry of the thief should not find expression in my house the ministry of sickness and infirmity should not find expression in me because this house is a house of prayer pray pray let it be from the depth of your heart my house shall be called a house of prayer satan you have no authority to steal from this house to kill from this house to destroy this house because it is a house of prayer hallelujah hallelujah listen i want you to believe in this prayer that you are praying you are not wasting your time something is happening to you acts chapter 28 acts chapter 28 in jesus name now please listen let me establish another prayer point in acts chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 and down to 6 the bible says when paul had escaped the storm remember an angel appeared to him and he told them there shall be no loss and the bible says they went safely and arrived at an island called melita now verse 2 28 verse 2 the bible says when the locals he calls them the barbarians the people showed them kindness watch this now paul was about to reveal something that the people did not have the discernment to see the bible says there was a viper hiding in the wood a viper a venomous snake that could it it could it could bite you and even kill you how did it hide that those who brought down the wood did not see it and they put everything together and while they sat down there as soon as the wood was on fire the viper that was hiding there suddenly became exposed if fire was not there the viper will still hide in the wood and you will not know that you are living with an enemy but as soon as fire was lit the fire exposed the viper listen can i tell you i know this about the prayer ministry there are things that you may never understand occurrences and happenings of demon spirit it takes generating energy in the spirit and suddenly you will begin to see that the things you could not understand are now making sense what, what, why why am i receiving all these assaults from the place of work what is this when my promotion is coming in the place of prayer fire can expose the viper fire can expose the viper lift your voice and pray pray with this understanding that everything that attempts to impede the purposes of god in my life by the power of the holy ghost the fire that comes in this prayer the fire expose the viper the fire expose the cause of your pain the fire expose the cause of the delays the fire expose the cause of the disfavor the fire expose the cause of the antagonisms someone is 
is praying. Someone is praying. Shabra katos koto prende gata. Lekata braska te shakata berekotos. Embreketos. Eka shekete beretos ke niata kasa. of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus is God helping us Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 Jesus taught us a very deep mystery Jesus was teaching on the activity of spirits and he said when an unclean spirit listen carefully is gone out of a man that it walked through dry places seeking rest and finding none next verse the bible says then it will say i will return to what the man is free but as far as the spirit is concerned it is his house and he says i will return to my house from whence i came out and when he is come he will find it empty he will find it swept he will find it garnished last verse the bible says he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they will enter in and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than let me explain something to you listen it takes a man anointed by God with spiritual understanding to cast out a demon out of another do we agree on that and then the Bible tells us something serious that that spirit goes to the desert and when it goes to the desert where there is no man to cast it by itself there is a condition in the desert that makes that spirit uncomfortable and it will prefer to come back and fight with that man a desert is a place of extreme heat and that when that spirit goes to that place in the presence of that extreme heat the spirit by itself with no one to cast it becomes uncomfortable that means when your body becomes like that desert when your life becomes like that desert that the spirit becomes uncomfortable because the desert is a place of heat the bible says he maketh his ministers his angels can i tell you this listen you don't know how cheap satan is until you pray satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness makes him become that a spirit in a human body will require a man anointed by the holy ghost to get it out but it goes to a desert where there's no preacher no keyboard no drums no choir no protocol the heat in the desert will cast it back and it will come to stay in someone else That means when you become in the similitude of the heat of that desert your life and everything around you becomes a no-go zone for any operation of demon spirits is someone ready to pray you are praying with this understanding that I am praying to become in experience a flame of fire lift your voice and pray a flame of fire a flame of fire a flame of fire saneka paroto soto koto mariata a flame of fire a flame of fire
Don't be tired, make sure you're praying. He praptos koto prakete paratos kate prende katele kotisia. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Very powerful scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Is it projected? Can you see it? Can we read it together? One, two, read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hold on. Wherefore, your favor would have arrived since. Wherefore, your lifting, wherefore, your destiny helper would have arrived. He said, I tried once and again. But Satan, listen, I understand this scripture very, very well. Let me tell you a story and then we'll pray. Sir, I don't know how many years now, I was praying one night, true story, and then my, my ceiling suddenly disappeared in that vision and then i'm seeing this creature and it is looking at me having eyes that are as big as a human head i'm not exaggerating it looked like a dinosaur and it was looking at me red eyes and then it had a tail the tail had its own life you could detach it and it would still be alive and he was looking at me with fierce anger and he made a statement he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was a statement but satan hindered us you will you will be amazed to know how many things would have been easy for you But Satan hindered us. Now listen, let me tell you this. Even though it happened with Jesus, I want to explain something to you. Hmm. The centurion in one of the synoptic accounts pleaded with Jesus to come and rescue their child from dying. Remember that story? While Jesus was on his way going, another woman interrupted him and said please i have an issue of blood and he focused and was dealing with her issue by the time he was done in one of the synoptic accounts they said this other person had died timing matters in destiny hear me it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the five other virgins if the bridegroom came early all the ten they were all virgins the delay of the bridegroom made the oil of the five they all started well but the bridegroom was late i want you to pray with understanding that every hindrance i desire to come to you once and again only god knows how many things in abuja have been authorized by prophecy to come to you they have tried they tried in 2019 they tried in 2020 Lift your voice and pray with understanding. I clear away every hindrance by the blood of the Lamb. Paros kates kote mashata. Open doors that should have come. Lift things that should have come. Answers to prayer that should have come. Alike paruska te brente ke toska dia da bos. E preke te kotos koto brente ke tele katos. Shame skonde brendi katos kiata. Se te brendi ke di bas. Oh, 
results you will get from this prayer believe me now listen once upon a time in Bible days there was a criminal called Barabbas listen carefully many of you will be surprised the reason and the explanation for disfavor around your life there was a criminal called Barabbas who had been troubling the people and they apprehended him and, and kept him and then one time when they caught Jesus also, listen to me, Pontius Pilate brought Jesus to stand and brought Barabbas to stand and they asked the people, who do you want to be crucified and who should be released? There was a spirit that came upon the people and they looked at Jesus and said, this is the one to crucify and release the criminal. How do you in your right mind release a criminal so don't be surprised that there can be four people in the office who are supposed to be promoted and in spite of your capacity that there is an orchestration of darkness where good can be called evil and evil can be called good he said do not allow your good to be evil spoken of that means if you keep quiet and you don't pray you can be doing good but a perception can come on your good and it will be seen as evil are you ready to pray open your mouth and decree and declare my good will be rewarded as good my good will never be evil spoken of Barabbas should never be released a criminal in the stead of a righteous man please pray let your good be evil spoken of do not let your good be evil spoken of oh man of god oh businessman oh career person contend in prayer do not allow your good to be misrepresented hallelujah 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 praise the Lord let me show you a mystery in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the Bible says and Abraham was old and well stricken in age help me finish that scripture and the Lord had blessed him in how many things so God is able to grant rest round about now please come with me to Acts chapter 26 Acts chapter 26 Acts 16 Acts chapter 16 
from verse 25 Acts 16 from verse 25 now when you begin to read contextually you will see that Paul casted a demon out of a lady who brought gain for her masters by divination is that true on account of that miracle it boomeranged on them and they, they now took them and kept them in prison but there's something I want to show now a prison is a place of confinement it's a place of limitation the Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly there was a great earthquake hallelujah so that the foundations of the prison were shaken please read the next sentence everyone and immediately all doors how many doors how many doors immediately once there was an earthquake all doors financial doors open all doors open a god can give a man rest round about he says all doors open all doors open listen when you read second kings chapter 5 will not turn there for sake of time the bible says naaman there was a man called naaman he was the captain of the syrian army he says he said he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous thank god for the areas you have gotten results but for the sake of one other area you must insist in prayer that in this year all doors open lift your voice and pray all doors all doors all doors all doors all doors in the marvelous name of jesus all doors all doors open all doors doors of favor open all doors doors of speed open of ministry open open in the name of Jesus all doors open doors of jobs open doors of relationships open doors of fruitfulness open hallelujah 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 we're wrapping up please do not forget what I want to share with you now please look up let me establish probably the last prayer point or so the gospel the gospel that we that we preach has two sides to it there is the message that saves that is the first dimension of the gospel the message that saves and the key to propagating that message is evangelism are we together but there is the second dimension to it the ideology that transforms society so there are two sides to the gospel there is the message that saves there is the ideology that transforms society the key to advancing the message is called evangelism but the key to advancing the ideology is called influence I'm establishing my prayer request now my prayer point so for you to completely preach the gospel you need to embrace the message that saves that deals with you personal salvation but territorial salvation is the mindset that is introduced into systems and structures that enthrones Christ are we together now 
if you focus only on the message that saves you will be saved as an individual but your territory will frustrate your christian experience an example was lot in sodom and gomorrah lot was a righteous man as a person but he was among a people who were depraved and he could not find expression so there are two keys to kingdom advance number one is evangelism number two is influence satan has a primary assignment to stop both but if for any reason he can't do anything about your receiving jesus now your personal salvation is a done deal the next place of attack is your influence what is influence influence is the capacity to cause men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty territories can be changed overnight with the power of influence cultures are shaped through influence the bible says and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men can i tell you most people downplay the power of influence at every point in your life someone is influencing you and you are to bring the influence of the kingdom satan will fight influence in any way he can i want to show you a scripture because the gates of influence is about to open for someone are we together in isaiah chapter 60 when you read from verse 1 to 3 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i would like to quote this many times from amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light it says for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you listen carefully verse 2 says for darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you verse 3 influence gentiles all nations shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings their kings already have results they won't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising are we together the end time church is going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom not only through evangelism and discipleship but it will come through influence acts chapter 12. oh someone's life is changing acts chapter 12 from verse 1. please do not forget this scripture and this revelation now watch this you know that the disciples of jesus i want to show you how satan fights influence you know the disciples of jesus were in different levels there was the 70 or 72 he had the 12 but there were three people there were things that they saw the rest did not see and satan marked every one of them he started by beheading james it was peter james and john the threefold cord that cannot be easily, easily broken when he found james and they beheaded him he went straight to paul the bible says they killed james and he saw that it pleased the jews and he went straight to peter during the days of the unleavened bread be patient let's read the bible says when he had apprehended peter he put him in where prison what was he fighting he put him in prison you would think that would be enough but then he brought four quaternions of soldiers to still keep him in prison it was not just confinement he wanted four eight soldiers again covered him intending after easter to bring him forth before the people verse 5 the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison please help me finish the remaining part of that sentence but prayer was made 
this was what was not done for James unfortunately there is no record that they stood in for James and James died but when Peter was there the church said no way there is something we can do please keep it there we're still reading the Bible says prayers was made without season of the church unto God for him the result verse 6 the Bible says and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains Abba, you lock a man in prison tie him with chains and put eight soldiers that's not a fight for liberty is influence and the Bible says that the keepers were there before the door who kept the prison verse 7 and behold the angel of the Lord came in response to prayer listen and a light shined in that prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands verse 8 the Bible says the angel said guard yourself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and when he went out listen carefully he followed him and wished not that which was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision now verse 10 the Bible says he held Peter the angel and they passed the first and second ward or gate watch this now they passed the first gate he was no longer in prison but he was still confined they passed the second gate far from the prison but still no liberty and the Bible says and they came to the iron gate which leaded to where so there is a gate that leads to the city every man's city is his place of influence did the Bible not say you are <laughs> listen there is a gate that leads to the city when that gate opens the city must see you for who you are and now begin to place a demand the iron gate that leads to the city businessmen hear me you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are not there because there are gates that must open I understand what I'm telling you listen in Zaria one time there are few only few people here that really understand you know that may know Zaria the Lord asked me to trek from a place quite far in town and to trek down till a place called aviation and I was trekking and just speaking over that territory because there are spirits that reside over that place I know what it means for the tulip gates of a city to be opened. can I tell you you can be doing I've seen many gifted people sir anointed and sincere but the gates that leads to the city has not been opened I've seen business people who cannot understand preachers sincere love God anointed but the two lift gates in ancient times you would never come into a city until the gate is open is that true every city spiritually has gates just because you move there physically does not mean the gate is open there is a protocol to influence now watch this the first gate opened the second gate opened and the Bible says this very gate was called the iron gate and my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in Sunday when Jesus prophetically in Psalm 24 
was returning back to the land of the living there was a cry lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors hold on those doors have been there for a long time they are used to closing over people and the gates replied who is this king of glory can i tell you this listen for a few of you who may have seen the posters that and i'm saying this respectfully of my coming into the city when i was praying that map of abuja or something there's one i i, I don't i still don't know the names of your cities you won't believe it cities is the city gates there's one map there like that that was what i saw in my vision that was why i told them to put it in the you know the the billboard or whatever it is because you see let me tell you sincerely spiritually speaking gates have seat, seat um, um cities have gates you want to understand this properly go to the north you won't get it very well around the south you go to the north you see the entrance of every major place you see that now the gates do not have anything closing them but you enter and believe you are in you the city will show you you are not invited there are many business people in Abuja you see the Bible says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course Psalms 82 and now verse 5 verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes it takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to command authority even in prayer the foundation for effective prayer is access to the mysteries of the kingdom so that you pray in keeping with the will of God you can know your prayer will be answered your intelligence is consistent with scripture you are not praying amiss the iron gate that opens to the city can I tell you this some of you here are business people some of you here have schools you're running some of you here might be other ministers who came that there is a gate that has to open but when that gate opens you will marvel and wonder the bible says gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people you would think he did, he did not know where they were hiding he just there was a shofar can i tell you there is an anointing called the hear ye him anointing people don't just listen to you because you have something to say it takes more than that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased creation was given an instruction hear ye him when that grace comes on your business right from where you are blow 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 like a mighty wind Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind? Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. I do not know any herbalist any spiritist or anybody at least we see from nigerian film that you come and meet and say baba or whoever because they are both male and female whether baba or mama whichever one i need help look up please who will just tell you you need help go it is done even if it's your biological father he will demand action there is something you must do and based on the gravity of what you want to be done that is the level of demand there are sometimes they may say are you ready to give your wife ah my wife but i'm desperate for this position say well we have consulted with the realm of the spirit and we have found out that this is the condition connected to this and there are people sadly who would do it that even includes your soul the bible is clear as to the fact that there is a place on earth where men can do business even with their soul and gain the world as a result and the bible he knows that it will work 
you gain the whole world by losing your soul. And the result will work. You are gaining the whole world, but will not see your soul that has been lost, unfortunately. Hmm. Everywhere the power of God is dispensed, there must be a demand for obedience. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere you see Jesus manifesting power, especially in the midst of men, there will always be an action. There will always be, he would ask them a question, do you believe I am able to do this? If you believe, stand up, pick up your bed and walk. Or what should I do for you? You would think that as powerful and compassionate as he was and he is, he shouldn't even ask them any question. But there was always a demand because the power of God is faith dependent. Please listen carefully. The power of God is faith dependent. The power that lifts you is faith dependent. The power that attracts possibilities to your life is faith dependent. The power that will raise your children to become excellent people is faith dependent. The power that will grow that church to bring glory to God is faith dependent. And if you do not understand faith, then you cannot understand the power of God. Is someone learning? Now, I want to teach you three levels. There are three levels at which the power of God is accessed and released. Three levels. The power of God is accessed at three levels. And all those levels have the dimensions of possibilities that they bring. I want you to please lend me your attention now. We're in the school of power. Is someone learning? Three levels. Number one, write this down and please do not forget it. The first level is the power that has been programmed into laws and principles. Please write. There is a dimension of the power of God that has been programmed into laws, L-A-W-S, and principles. The first dimension of the power of God that all men, even the saints can access is the power of God that has been programmed into laws and principles. An instance is in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. God made a very profound pronouncement there and he connected it to the earth. Look up please. It says, while the earth remaineth. Is that in your Bible? It says, seed time and harvest everybody say laws cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease have you seen any one of these seas on earth sometimes the seasons will be so prolonged you would think the other one will not come but a dimension of God's power was invested into laws and principles and look at me the nature of this dimension of power is that it functions based on understanding, not relationship. You do not need a relationship with God to access this dimension of his power. That is the reason why an individual can reject God as God, but walk in keeping through understanding to these laws and access that dimension of power. This is a dimension of power that unbelievers have used to build conglomerates. Unbelievers have used the law of value has the power of God attached to it. The law of relationships has the power of God attached to it. It says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. Whether that person is a believer or not, the moment you are friendly, you, that dimension of God's power is kicked into your favor. Watch this. If a terrorist decides to maximize the rainy season to farm, will it bring crops for him? I hope you know that earth that produced for him is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And yet that man as evil-hearted as he is or they are will still farm because the power of God has been invested into the law of seed time and harvest. They will still have a bumper harvest. Please listen carefully, believers. Apostle, I desire power in my life. I want to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I don't know why I'm not seeing the power of God. 
you may have neglected this dimension of the power of God. Why are unbelievers striving and excelling? They don't love Jesus, yet we see them excel because they have mastered this dimension of accessing the power of God. They may not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. In fact, they may deny him to his face, but that does not mean the laws will stop working. If you understand me, say amen. Let me, just, you, you don't need to write, just look at me. Let me list for you a few laws that have the power of God behind them. Are you ready? You can just listen. Number one is the law of diligence. The Bible says the diligent hand shall be made rich. No matter who on earth, the moment you subscribe to diligence, there is a great future for you under normal circumstances. If you are diligent and you do not prosper, it takes demons to interrupt that law. But under normal circumstances, diligence should and productivity is connected to wealth and increase. Number two, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That every time you show mercy, you are programming that reality, whether you are born again or not, based on the laws of seasons and the laws of time and chance, eventually that harvest will come to you. Herein lies the answer to the age-long question. Why is it that if God is the God of the universe, there are believers who are suffering, there are children who are crying across the globe, how can a loving God be seated upon his throne and is watching children in Africa die, whereas there are people who are renting jets and renting a lot of things and wasting their lives and it looks like God is watching them. Listen to me, God gave every man a will and not even him will violate that will. At the expense of your eternal destiny, he allows you to choose whether you want to hand your life to him or not. And if you reject him, he will respect your decision. Even when Satan rebelled against him in heaven, he respected his decision. Unfortunately, every decision comes with consequences. It was not that God got up and decided to punish Satan. The judgment of Satan was the consequence of rebellion. Are we together? This is very powerful. So when we see people cry and die and scrounge around in our society, is a violation largely. Now, demon spirits have taken advantage of that state, but they are taking advantage of that state because they already know that there is a dimension of the power of God invested in principles. Watch this. So a gentleman gets up one day I'm not talking of someone who is born again. We're believers, but I hope you understand why I'm teaching you this way. So a gentleman who is not even saved just gets up and reads a book. Maybe a book written by Bill Gates or a book written by any great man and makes up his mind that I'm going to take my destiny by my hands. Are we together? Now, this is somebody who is not saved and makes up his mind to walk with the things that are written there. He begins to change his attitude. He begins to subject himself through all kinds of things. He subscribes to mentorship. Are we together? Educate his mind. You will find out that the reality of that man begins to change. Remember our definition of power? The ability to control and to manipulate your outcome. The once poor and wretched gentleman suddenly begins to change. His life is changing. This gentleman has refused to accept the person of Jesus, but he has adopted the principles of Jesus. They may not acknowledge him as the author of those principles, but please, I want you to believe me that if you ever see any manifestation of power, it is because there's a dimension of God's power programmed in laws. Now, people call it all kinds of names. Some call it the laws of the universe. Some call it all kinds of laws. Some attribute it to mother nature, unfortunately. But we who are of the faith, we know, that's why I laid that foundation. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the Lord. So if I plant corn and I see that corn growing, I don't congratulate the universe for giving me corn. I give glory to Jesus because I know that he's the one who empowered it. But if I'm an unbeliever, I can give that glory to my conscience or some kind of cosmic power. This is the advantage that believers have. When believers practice the laws of the kingdom, the advantage is that we practice it as submitting to Jesus and eventually the glory returns to Jesus. Are you learning now? 
but you neglect laws and principles and you find out that you have neglected a whole dimension of God's power you may never experience it in your life could it be that someone seated now you are born again you are saved but you have ignored obedience to principles and to laws spiritual laws laws that have been taught scriptural laws there are laws of growth there are laws of leadership there are laws of influence there are laws of multiplication there are laws of restoration which of them do you not know which of them do you know my assignment is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit to expose you to these laws of the kingdom. I call them mysteries. Matthew 13 and 11. Jesus himself was teaching the disciples and he said the kingdom was shrouded in mysteries. He says because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Watch a display of spiritual laws. Moses comes to stand in front of Pharaoh and he throws his rod and that rod becomes a serpent. Look at me. And then Janus and Jembes, they never called the name of Jesus, yet they threw their rod and it became that. Now, I'm not promoting evil. Never will I do so. It is for the purpose of my discussion with you. How many of you know that in our various villages, in our various market squares, and even some have been so sophisticated, there are people who are acclaimed magicians. Am I right on that? And they, they bastardize spiritual laws. You sit down. Sometimes you, you, you almost have to shut yourself from watching those things because they, the things that you seem to be craving to see manifest, they play child play they manipulate the laws of the spirit it only reveals to you the possibilities that are there that are yet to be tapped all power belongs to God so I lay hands on a sick person and says in the name of Jesus stand up from this wheelchair and the person stands up and you are clapping yet another person is in a village somewhere telling someone look I, I cannot stand up and they say don't worry we'll put a particular leaf we'll chant something and then the person gets up now two of us seem to have done the same thing the difference is that Jesus is glorified in one and Satan is glorified in the other are you getting what I'm saying now the believer listen to me there are many many formulas and there are many routes to accessing power but the believer for you to be a believer indeed you must be constrained to only the method that scripture provides that does not mean there are no other routes but the believer has a mandate please get this are we together now the difference between witchcraft and satanism and spiritism is that you are walking out of the confines of the provisions that scripture allows the believer is not just interested in outcomes you are interested in making sure that what you practice is in keeping with the principles that are revealed in scripture failure to know this is what has led many people into extra biblical practices and into all kinds of satanic things because when you now know that after all every law is God's law so let me manipulate it I can go and kill a goat and spill the blood after all the concept of blood was introduced by God himself not even Satan I can now manipulate you but when you know that as a believer part of what makes you a believer is your total submission to the authority of scripture your total submission to the ways of God so if you advertise a strategy for me even if it is producing results and is inconsistent with scripture my being a believer mandates that I reject it are we together is someone learning now if you if you're understanding me say amen Why will I not just go and call some herbalist somewhere and say we're all co-laborers, we're colleagues in this business. The most important thing is we're getting people healed. Why will I not do that? Because the results may seem to have a similitude, it may look like there's result, but our convictions, the government that we pledge our authority to, are we together? And the modus operandi, the pathway we follow are very different. I will not hate them, but I'm not going to fraternize with them because I do not believe that. Why should Paul in Acts chapter 16 
cast a demon out of a damn cell who was using it to prophesy to people. If it was just about the prophetic, he rebuked her because in doing that, Satan was manipulating that thing. Are we together now? And he was using it to deceive many people and to bring gains to many people. If someone is learning, say amen. amen. So, the first level at which the power of God is accessed is the power programmed into laws and principles. Please hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you? Do you know why laws are very predictable? Watch this. Some of you, especially our international guests, you took a flight from your various nations to come here. Most likely the person who flew you was not a believer. Yet that whole aircraft and the system worked in keeping with the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics is not a scientific law. It is a spiritual law that was discovered and used by science. Are we together now? What you call scientific laws, go and ask the inventors of those laws. Is it the laws of mechanics? Is it the law of whatever it is? Everything you call a law today, we just say they are spiritual laws and natural laws simply because of the dimensions where they find expression. But in truth, there are only spiritual laws. All laws are spiritual because they have the power of God back in them. Are we together? So, men like Sir Isaac Newton, in their study of mechanics, they, start, they stumbled across several laws and put their postulations together. Are we together? There were many other scientists, Michael Faraday, look at this. Today we are enjoying and preaching the gospel because of a concept called electricity. The Wright brothers, are we together now? Henry Ford, all of these people, the inventions in our world today are simply spiritual laws that have been tapped and have been converted into a way and a strategy that betters the life of people. That means... Even when no plane had flown in the air, the law of aerodynamics was still there. Only God knows how many other laws are there that we are yet to find. Once upon a time, listen, many of you remember, once upon a time, if you went to the bank, you could not transfer money from your branch to another branch. No. Not to talk of whoever believed that you can hold a phone and with your phone you can do transactions, you can talk to anybody across the world. Remember those days when rain falls and your night tail line cuts. You have to carry a ladder and start strolling around your community looking for which one a tree has fallen on now. To fix it so that your phone will come back. But right now with one dial, with one dial you can be talking to someone from anywhere across the globe. Those laws were always there. Just because we did not know them. The power of God remained dormant on that wise. Today we talk of AI and all these technological things. Look at how excited we are entering into it. Yet they have always been there. Please listen to me. If you understand what I'm telling you, your life will become phenomenal. You will now respect the laws of God. This organization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Even if it is practiced by a Christian, the moment you are disorganized in leadership, in ministry, as a person, there will never be growth with disorganization. Scatter your clothes and try to put it in a bag. You find out that it seems like it cannot enter. Iron them and arrange the same clothes. You will now be able to close the bag. Disorganization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Now, watch this. Why am I teaching you this? So that in wanting to see the power of God made manifest in your life, you will see that God was so determined that he invested his power in laws and principles. Wealth has a law. Kingdom wealth does not just work on laws alone. When you now bring kingdom, it is not only laws now. You have to bring in the will of God and the purposes of God. That's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth. There is a difference between influence and kingdom influence. Influence, you just need to work on the law of growth, result, productivity, leadership. But when you bring kingdom to it, you now have to submit to the will of God. Are we learning now? Look at the advancements we are making in medicine. 
Watch this. I hope you know that the same malaria that today, if someone said, I have fever or malaria, they say, oh, sorry. Just stroll to a pharmacist there, talk with the pharmacist, and they will give you some drug. Nobody will lament. In fact, many people will not even pray. They will just say it's well. But the same malaria once upon a time on earth here, if you had it, it was as though you had HIV. Am I right? It was as though you had cancer. Yet, there were laws that had these solutions. One day, scientists together stumbled across a combination that could sort out malaria so easily. Now, someone can even be doing his work and say, you know, I've had malaria. And you say, sorry. And you expect to see that person by next week. The power of laws. That means cancer that is killing people today. Listen carefully. That means... HIV that is killing people today there is a supernatural dimension to it but please I want you to believe me that God who put his power in laws there is every solution it is the, this is where the assignment of the Holy Ghost comes you will be learning how inventions happen invention is not brain work invention is a spirit assisting a man to find where these laws are alongside the combination go and ask inventors they will tell you inventors are usually lonely people they alienate themselves from society it is that level of consecration that introduces them to spirits they may not acknowledge that i'm interacting with a spirit they will say a voice told me join this join that join this and boom something happens there were people from as far back as 1992 1993 who predicted the technological advancement of these days not by word of knowledge the progression of inventions and that happened by the assistance of spirits we are still coming to the other dimensions i am just telling you that watch this we are immersed in a myriad of spiritual laws waiting for us to understand the bible is the believer's compendium of these laws that if you find out from this Bible, whoever knew that if someone is sick, you can play worship and play all of this and it can bless the person and it can be healed. Now medical science is telling us that even people who submit themselves to these atmospheres and these energies, that they have a, a, a chance of recovery than those who are allowed to be lonely and just sit back there. But this, right from the beginning, these things were in the Bible. Now, hear me. I know that people have used satanic and demonic laws to destroy. My goal is to help you know that these laws work because it is the power of God that is behind them. Forever until Jesus comes, when you get an airplane and the laws of aerodynamics is working well, when you move that plane, are we together now? It is going to go upon the air and we are going to travel and keep traveling, taking the gospel and taking whatever it is on the strength of that law. Many people have come here today. Look at your phone. Once upon a time, do you remember something called Nokia 3310? Remember how proud you were the day you bought it? You flaunted it, the same thing you are hiding today. When you are sorting your clothes and you find it, you quickly destroy it. You don't want to identify with it. Just, I'm just giving an example. But you can imagine that once upon a time, that was your pride. It would have been a dream to imagine that you can sit down and be watching Koinonia from your phone. Some of you, there are children who do not even know what a cafe is. How about typewriters? Semicolon LKJ, you were taught. And some of you got zero because you couldn't understand it. Where will I put my fingers? Hmm. Are we together? Yet, the laws that can make the globe to be at the, at the hand of a man it's like this just here today you can do any kind of thing unimaginable things the laws believers please hear me before jesus returns let me tell you 
one of the things that the Spirit of God is doing is he's opening the eyes of believers to see other laws, combinations that will provide solutions to men. I'm not just talking of supernatural solutions to the church because there are dimensions of supernatural solutions that the world will not receive. So God brings it down through laws. If I pluck a leaf now and I say eat it, you call me a herbalist. But if I consult with a pharmacist and turn that leaf into a pill and I say swallow it and cancer disappears, you will call that an invention. And you are right. Let me tell you, there are many leaves that are for the healing of the nations. You see, some of our, some of our aged parents in almost every village I know in Africa, there's usually one old man who was trained to combine some leaves. You just come and say, my head is paining. He said, just relax. He will stroll around as if he's looking for something that is missing and bring all kinds of things, pound them and say, oh yeah, you eat it. And to your shock, now, it was demonic spirits that taught them. But I'm teaching you that those laws, demonic spirits do not invent power. They only, because they know that men unassisted are ignorant, they will come to you and claim that they want to give you power. Your, their own cut from the deal is your loyalty to them. Then they will now show you certain spiritual combinations. This is how witchcraft happens. Witchcraft is a manipulation of God's power that comes through a necessary alliance with Satan intended to ultimately give you a semblance of result while corrupting your desire for God. But make no mistakes about it. If your plane still flies, if you still switch on your phone, can you imagine that you send a text and it does not make a mistake to enter another number? Eight billion people there about on earth, yet the person you are sending to, it gets to his phone in a moment. I'm holding right here a mic. When I watch the videos of um, Catherine Kuhlman and all these people, when this kind of invention was in its infancy, you see them hanging, they, they, they hang all kinds of things like a growth around their waist and carry it. I mean, you can imagine hanging something this heavy. Yet to them, they were impressed because it was an invention. And today, to many people, I'm even living in a stone age holding this. Are we together? My question for you is what else is there? It would be foolishness to imagine that we have exhausted the laws that are there. What else is there? That someone can come up with something called YouTube and in a moment you can broadcast a meeting like this to the ends of the earth and everybody is connecting. Once upon a time, if you did not have television, you will cry, you will save. Now your TV for some of you has been off for a long time. Because another kind of TV was given to you. What if you are given another that you do not have to hold again? Are you saying it will not happen? Number two, some of you are already afraid. <laughs> Jesus. The power that is in the name of Jesus is not just for destruction of the camp of the enemy alone. Are we together? There are witty inventions, combinations. Doctors hear me, medical people hear me. There are laws that are waiting for you. And very soon, I believe, some believer somewhere will have his eyes open to see what we need to combine to kill cancer permanently. Yeah. All of these demonic things that keep staring us at the face. We watch our loved ones carrying all kinds of things. Satanic things that keep plaguing them. From a medical standpoint, I'm telling you there are many laws that will be coming by the Spirit of God that will come up with supernatural solutions. 
solutions that end on timely death solutions that bring that a day will come someone will say i'm feeling a trace of cancer and it will be like malaria go and take this and it's over say amen oh. from a medical standpoint and with all due respect to them there are certain diseases and certain organs in the human body that if and when it begins to deteriorate they tell you that there is no way for recovery they only manage it i respect medicine with all my heart but from the authority of scripture i can tell you the wisdom of god is bigger than that god will never design a system recovery and restoration is a part of the nature of god as far as he's dealing with men is concerned and i'm sure that sooner or later one spirit-filled scientist is going to debunk certain things and say we have found a way to reverse liver problems we have found a way to reverse kidney problems we have found a way to reverse stage four cancer shout amen if you believe that number two the second dimension of the power of God is the power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please write it down. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. This is the highest dimension of power that any person in this side of God's kingdom can access. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please look at me. As powerful as laws and principles are, in themselves, they do not capture the complete power of God. There are dimensions of God's power that does not come just through understanding of laws. You will need to have an actual relationship with the Lord and you will need to pursue intimacy with God. That dimension of power is the reward that you get for intimacy with God. That is the dimension where supernatural power resides. The power to do impossible things supernaturally. So I can give somebody by the operation of laws, Panadol and whatever it is, and the person can recover. But then the person can come and with one word, I can say in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing now? All power, but different dimensions of power. And the person is healed. Someone can follow the normal laws of wealth, respectfully so, and he's building gradually, but I can come and speak prophetically over him and say by this time tomorrow and program a climate of favor and someone just says, do you know what? I'm giving you 100 million. Now look at that kind of thing. I have superimposed, I have brought another dimension of power. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The power that comes through intimacy is, is, a, is marvelous in its operation because this one is not what you receive with your hands this one is a heart connection this is your 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 pressing into God I love you for who you are your growth in the spirit growth through the word growth in the place of prayer are we together your passionate pursuit of God Show me a man that loves God sincerely. Show me a man devoted and dedicated who will open up his heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I show you a man who is about to stumble across genuine supernatural power. Drugs. There is no drug we know today that can raise the dead. It can only help those who are alive. Even medical science will tell you. Are we together? Once someone is confirmed clinically dead, and after a while it is true that the person is dead completely, even the doctors, even the consultants, and we celebrate them and appreciate them greatly for their contributions, but they will stand in honest admission that we have done our best. This person has gone. Yet, ah, there is an ability. The Bible tells us that when it has to do with that dimension of power, even death is not the end. Now, we may not have entered into the fullness of that experience yet, but we must admit that it is a possibility because the Bible says it. And Jesus showed it. He died. Jesus died. Jesus ate bread, oh. Jesus ate fish, but bread and fish could not bring him back. But if that same spirit 
that raised Christ from the dead. Listen, I know that as it is now, we have not mastered raising the dead. We lose loved ones here and there. But can I tell you, in the midst of your pain, settle it that there is still a dimension of God's power. And I assure you, before Jesus returns, there will be men who will embody these dimensions. There are men who are pressing into God sincerely. We may be crawling like babies, but we are still moving. Deeper levels of intimacy, deeper levels in prayer, deeper levels with the word. And from one level to the other, we are stepping into the prophetic, we are stepping into dimensions. Someday, all it takes is one man, one man to dive into that river, dive into that river of power. Listen, let me tell you how the economy of God works. He does not take a crowd into new experiences. Usually, it's just one person one person who will push and say lord i will not rest one person the prophetic is wonderful but this is not the end oh god there has to be an ability to raise the dead with the level of mastery you use to heal headache all it takes is for one person now let me tell you there is a side effect if you become that one person you will be persecuted greatly because men as a track record persecute their saviors but your sustainability will begin to reproduce your kind and sooner or later you will find out go and read about the right brothers if you were alive in their days you would join those insulting them and say go and look for something intelligent to do with your life but they remained go and study on michael faraday go and study on nikola tesla go and study on all these men today we celebrate their inventions but they lived lonely life they were the mockery of society people looked at them like outcasts but there was something within their spirit the same way someone here you cannot describe it but you know the holy ghost has been telling you some of you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in your vision this cannot be it there is still a higher level of power Thank God for the miracle services. Thank God for falling down and standing up. But we are talking about tapping into the powers of the age to come. Levels of realities that the world has not seen. I don't know about you, but this has been my lifelong pursuit. There are things I've only seen in the spirit. And my desire is that in my lifetime, that we'll be able to bring some of these realities here and now read your Bible and watch men Joshua tells the son stand still that one is not a law because nobody has replicated it that one oh, is not a law how do you look at the son and tell it to stand still ah. Moses looks listen listen we brag and say we're in the New Testament, yet we don't come close to what this man did. Listen, I'm telling you, my spirit is fired up right now. A man, an ordinary man, leading 2.5 million people, he stands at the Red Sea, a stammerer, and he holds his stick and drops it on that water. And it's not a parable, it parted heater and teeter. Hear me. Your Bible talks about a man called Noah who did not study architecture, yet he built an ark. It was not a parable. Have you built any structure that can host all the animals in the world? And that, listen, the best of the structures in the world have been victims of tsunamis, have been victims of all kinds of tornadoes and volcanoes. But that which Noah built, no pillar to the ground, standing on water, yet it did not sink. What technology did he deploy? Listen, many of us here are science-based. Prove to me that you can build an ark of gopher wood with a lot of space inside are we together and put all the animals in the wall that weight must make it sink are we together all the animals in the world and then the heavens give rain and the earth also gives rain and yet it does not capsize it does not turn around come on There are realms beyond science. 
there are realms beyond physics there are realms that only intimacy can take you there please believers hear me i speak to an intellectual generation i respect your intellect but there are realms and virgin dimensions in the spirit that it takes hunger and a press that men can access power power that science cannot explain but to take there are dimensions of grace I'm telling you there is a generation every generation will not fail I assure you there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it it is a hunger in the heart of God every generation will not miss it I have watched the videos of God's generals by the privilege of God's grace I have heard of the things that they did I have read about the church in Nigeria the mighty men and women who God used and we salute everything they have done but like every generation we also saw their limitations I'm telling you there is a generation that will demonstrate God to the earth that will dumbfound principalities and powers living walking miracles living walking miracles living walking miracles there are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings, there are kingdoms. this hear me there are many of you beyond level one businessman I know you have learned all the laws of business but can I tell you that there are still demon spirits and they have the power to manipulate those laws so that even in your obedience of them they may not seem to happen this is where this other dimension comes the dimension through intimacy that you can speak with one word and shift the spiritual climate of a territory. I know this because it will happen. I have seen it many times in my visions and I don't know who will avail himself to say, Lord, there has to be a generation that will get it. There has to be a generation that will get it. Hallelujah. Watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, is that in your Bible? It says, shall he also do? Then it says, greater works. Hear me. Now, respectfully speaking, I salute all of us together for what we are doing. But when you hear me tell you that we are still, the version of spirituality we are in now is the version of typewriter technologically. There are still levels to enter. It's because of our slow place that is garnished by a lot of pride and arrival mentality. Thank God for the little we have seen. But believe me, I'm not just trying to be humble. I am telling you there are realms that we have not stepped into. Where we access the powers of the age to come. Men who become like God upon the earth. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you saw a flood about to wash a nation and you stood and said, Flood, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Listen, we have so recycled the little results that we have that we have built a camp of mediocrity around it. No. 
Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who is satisfied with falling down and standing up. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who just wants to give one prophecy, one word of knowledge. Tonight's message is not for someone who just wants to give Greek and Hebrew. We are talking of men who become living wonders, conduits of kingdom possibilities. Hallelujah. We brag about seeing angels. We brag about going to the realm of the spirit. We brag about meeting demons. We brag about meeting Jesus. But we cannot see the power that is connected to that intimacy. Because every time people met Jesus in the Bible, they came back with something they could prove. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to mock or be sarcastic. But I have read books of people who supposedly claim that they met Jesus every day for a long time. The Jesus you read in this Bible, find out those who met him for three and a half years. Look at what he left with them. They turned the world upside down. Whoever met Jesus and went back the same. Tell me one person who met Jesus. And yet we say we have met him. Yet we claim like we are drinking tea every day with him. And after all of that, the corresponding manifestation of power. Now, I have read my Bible. When Paul met him, look what happened to Paul. Paul, a, a hunger was in him that at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, all he could say is that I may know him. Let me meet him one more time. Let him do something to me. How about Peter? How about John? The madman at Gadara, he didn't have a vision of him every day. He met him once and became an evangelist. Can I tell you, we must re-examine the Jesus we have been seeing. Because I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Let me tell you the truth, I have read my Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. I have met Jesus and I know what happened to me. When you meet Jesus, there must be proof that you met him. The glory that emanates from your life find out what happened when Moses met him for 90 days Moses did not even know his face was shining is when he came down men said what is this they said what does it what kind of glow does it take to use a veil in the afternoon ladies and gentlemen this revival thing we keep talking about bar we're only going to waste our time if we don't mean business a genuine encounter with the God of the Bible, a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit must leave a, a provable deposit of God within you that you can take back as a gift. Listen, we're ordinary men. There are times that some of these, my lovely children come to me and I'm tempted to give them gifts. Sometimes I can bring out 10 naira. This is me, a man. Yet I know the value of seeing how I can respond to them. How much more the God of heaven. And he sat with you and spoke with you Joshua Selman you saw him is it true where is the proof and you have the effrontery to say light left him and came to you where is the light swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything hear me there were men and women in the bible who manifested certain dimensions of grace. Many of them have died today. But they left their dealings with God. The journey did not start for them by learning laws. It started by a pursuit of God. The prophet could look at the woman. How many of us can speak like Elisha? Madam, what do you want us to do for you? How can a man speak like that? Should I talk to the president for you? Don't ask me how. I know my ways to reach him. 
And she says, no, I live among my people. All of a sudden, the servant comes to say, I notice this woman has no child. And cheaply, this is not experimentation. The prophet looks at her and says, according to the time of life. He never said, call on me and update me with the result. Mm -mm. One statement. These ones are not laws. This is power that comes through intimacy. That someone comes to meet you and says, man of God, this is the last opportunity. There is somebody dying in the hospital. That's not when you should start teaching principles of friendliness or administration and say, you see, the dieting is a very serious thing. That is wonderful only when the person is going to leave. This guy is dying. Let me tell you the kind of men that God is looking for. People who will stand and say, let that sick person come that you will know there is a prophet in Israel. And with one pronunciation, Naaman, no matter how long your leprosy is, it is about to turn. Go and wash in Jordan seven times. Does not make sense, but this is a realm higher than science. And Naaman returns back and is healed. Jesus is strolling around Nain and he's seen a widow who is about to bury her child, haven't buried her husband. And Jesus says, stop, what is going on here? And the woman is crying and he says, drop that coffin down. My goodness, can I tell you, man of God, the day three dead people confirmed medically come back to life in your church, whether it's poster or Facebook, you don't, no matter what it is, it is security that will have to protect you because of the way people will weary you. I respect church growth principles, but there are superior principles. The manifestation of genuine power from heaven. The Bible says where the carcasses are, there the eagles will gather. Can I tell you? There are people who pack full stadiums because footballers are about to play football and they pay for it and they smuggle their way through the space and they are happy when something spectacular begins to happen most of the miracles that happen to us are still within the realm of controversy that is the reason why it is not compelling enough did it really happen this wheelchair did the person really stand up this headache did it how are we sure all that, there, there, there are levels called notable miracles, manifestations of the power of God that even the Sanhedrin council can say, this one, we cannot say anything against it. Power from on high. That this woman was barren and suddenly comes with four children. Ah. Then just when you are trying to say some manipulation, a dead body comes back to life. Five blind people look at how this blindness that was struggling to open people's eyes is your eye open the person said my eye is not open no, i'm not seeing yet there was a prophet in the bible who played with blindness and sight in a moment called elisha lord open his eyes he opened the servant's eyes close the eyes of an army their eyes were closed take them to samaria open their eyes look at he was playing with it that there is a formula listen i'm not just entertaining you except you are not a believer what did this man know what did this man carry today one blind eye is open whether verified or not we are so excited and thank god for it but what did the prophet know what did elijah know that he could laugh at the prophets of baal if you saw someone come with a charm right now a confirmed herbalist you say apostle where are you come and stand close to me as we pray because of fear yet elijah was laughing and said call bell maybe there was a time business was failing they could not catch any fish watch jesus if i were the one i would now start teaching principles of fishing and there is a place for that i taught you come in the night put your net and allow the fish to just play around it. Are we together? Bait them with feed and then you come and drag it and you catch fish. That is the principle of fishing. But watch what Jesus does. He says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter says, we've been struggling. What do you mean by have you any catch? He said, cast your net to the right side. Game over. Cast your net to the right side. It does not matter whether the fish 
What if that grace can come on you as a man of God to speak over your business people? Do you know what can happen to them? You are not endorsing laziness, but that this guy is in debt already. It is not a principle that will bring him out of debt. A family, listen, when the prophet met a woman who was in debt, he did not share principles. Now, don't get me wrong. There are principles that can bring her. When she, when she, her debt issue was solved, he now said, go and sell and live with the rest. He now introduced principles. There is a power of God that is invested in buying and selling. But with respect to this tragedy now, you need a higher level of power. Shut your door and begin to pour the oil. Shut your door. Listen, if we do not access this level of power, can I tell you, the devil is going to start using diseases like cancer, HIV, all these satanic diseases and he's going to waste a generation. There are real spirits that are oppressing God's people. There are mysterious occurrences happening to men in business. A man will build a house that he knows he built well. Some wind will just come and the whole house collapses. That is not an architectural problem. That is witchcraft. The solution is not just to add cement. The solution is to understand the mysteries of priesthood. That somebody can go and stand there and say in the name of the Lord Jesus, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Sit down. Can I give you the last one? And then I will teach you, oh dear, wherever we stop, we'll pray. Number one, the power of God programmed into laws and principles. Did you get that? Number two, the power of God that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Number three, the power that is accessed through covenant connections. The third and final dimension of God's power is accessed through covenant connections. What does that mean? That means an individual who has a covenant with God that has allowed for certain manifestations of his power. When you get connected to that person by covenant or by prophetic covering, you can become a partaker and a beneficiary of that dimension of God's power. Even though personally you may not be able to command it in your life, but by reason of that connection. An example for the sake of time, you find that in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5, then when we go to 13 from verse 1 to 6, it is the story of um, Abraham and Lot. The Bible talks about Abraham, that God called him and he says, and Lot went with him. When we get to chapter 13 from verse 1, when you read down to 6, the Bible says Abraham became rich in cattle, rich in all of this because of his covenant with God. But it says Lot who also went with him with no effort on his part also began to prosper. The moment Lot connected, disconnected from Abraham, he started going down until he found himself in Sodom. Covenant connections. Another example, that should be 2 Kings chapter 6. Give it to us, please. The story of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's start from verse 8. I hope I got that right. 2 Kings 6 and verse 8. The king of Syria warred against Israel. Watch this. And took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And every time the king discussed it, the Bible says, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel saying, beware that you do not pass through this place. So the king of Syria kept getting angry and he called his men and said, there is an insider betraying us here. And they said, no, my Lord, not so. It is this prophet called Elisha. He's the one who has been revealing the secret. And he now sent warriors. Are we together now? He sent warriors and then by night, they encamped all around Elisha. And then by morning, that should be, give us verse um, 16. Give us verse 16. Elisha, the servant, was now afraid. And when they got up, there was an army all around them. And the Bible says, Elisha answered and said to him, Fear, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now we're reading to 23, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Listen, 
Do you know the level of spiritual sacrifice and investment it takes for your eyes to be open under normal circumstances? And yet a prophet cheaply makes a request to God, not minding whether his servant believed it or not. And the Bible says the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. I hope you know by now Gehazi had become leprous, so he was no longer his servant. He was another one now. And he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed again to tell you it is not a mistake. He said, smite these people I pray with blindness. That's it. And he smote them. Can you imagine? It was as if God was a slave to a man. Smite these people and that's it. A whole army. These men were dangerous people. Imagine Nigerian army, for instance, preparing for war, and suddenly the presidency gets a call that all our military men have become blind. Why? Because somebody sat on the mountain and made a decree. These men were alive on earth. He smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha, 19. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way, neither this is a city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. He led them to Samaria, verse 20. The Bible says it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of this man. What if their eyes did not open again? He was so sure, open their eyes that they may see and the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of Samaria and the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them my father shall I smite them shall I smite them 22 and he answered thou shalt not smite them wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow he says set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go back to their master 23 and he prepared great provision for them watch this and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so the bands of syria came no more into the land of israel there is another way to keep a land safe war is one strategy the other one is through the accurate manifestation of superior prophetic manifestations that a whole army how do you know who will you send to kill such a man when you are blind before you arrive if they send you will you go <laughs> read about elijah resting up the mountain and a band of 50 people come you see how elijah was harsh he did not even command blindness. His own was fire to come on them. Another band came, fire came. The third, when they came, they begged him. They said, it's not, we are not coming on our own. We were instructed, please come down, follow us. They called him the troublemaker of Israel. This was Jezebel's own testament, testimony. There are men who will turn this world upside down. But hear me, this third level is very powerful because there are possibilities you desire to work in your life but as at yet you may not have ascended that realm in the spirit you can through covenant connection align with men and women who by the grace of god have accessed those realms and you can start partaking of those possibilities even before you come into it experientially this is true there are people who got planted under certain graces, under certain churches, and they began to prosper. And they did not even know so much about prosperity because they came under this third level of the power of God. When God calls men, you see, there are covenants that he has with them. And provided they walk in keeping with the conditions that maintain that covenant, there are graces that are released through those covenants. And the graces are not just for the benefit of the men alone. It says, I and the children children that the Lord has given me is that in your Bible we are for signs not I am for signs we are for signs it started with I but it extended to the children that the Lord had given me then he says we all together the one with the covenant and the one who has come through connection that's why certain times you see us speak in this ministry and sometimes you may think it's arrogance about certain graces that God has put here that if you have an understanding you see people come and stand and testify and just say it and sometimes respectfully speaking very unassuming people and you are wondering how did this thing add up here that is the power of covenant connections 
if Jonah enters your boat, you will go down. Whether you are good or not, you can know all the principles that make you a businessman. Plus Jonah, you are going down. Am I right on that? If Jesus enters your boat, no matter what goes wrong, even if it's only water that is in the boat, with the presence of Jesus, it will not go down. Covenant relationships are powerful. So the Spirit of God told Philip, join this chariot. And he joined the chariot and he met an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading about the Messiah, the prophecy. He was coming from Jerusalem, the place of, of worship. And now he began to explain to him. And when they found water, he said, this is water, can I be baptized? He said, understandest what thou readest. He said, how can I accept some man teach me? Ladies and gentlemen, every time you see the power of God manifesting on earth, it comes across men on these three platforms. Number one, principles and laws. That is not relationship dependent. That is purely a matter of understanding. Are we together? The second dimension that I've taught you is the highest that comes through relationships. This one comes directly from God. When you press into the things of God, there is a deposit of divinity upon you that can be proven here and now. And this is why we press in worship, we press in prayer, are we together? We press in fasting, we press loving Jesus. Because we love him, but we hope to be able to attain unto this state of power in the spirit. And then the third, God has connected us strategically to men and women across the globe to provide that advantage of accessing superior dimensions of God's power, even through covenant connections. Now listen, the last thing I'm going to teach you before we pray is for the power of God to be expressed on earth. Write it down, please. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. One of these five elements must be used. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. That means the power of God can never be expressed and seen in the world of men until his power is in partnership with one or more of these five elements put a colon and let me list the elements for you every time you see the power of god manifest in the bible every time you see the power of god manifest on earth there must be a participation of these five elements number one light light number two sound just right you will never see the manifestation of the power of God on earth except it comes through these conduits. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire. Four, earth. E-A-R-T-H. Five, water. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire four f five water please look up these are mysterious elements that god planted in our world you will never see the manifestation of god's power until it comes through one or more of these elements are we together this is very important now watch this god himself calls the word light and speaking about light in John 1 5 he says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not watch this the entire creation from a biological standpoint today survives on light am I right on that in this case the light of the Sun in biology we study about the light and dark reaction remember the process by which plants convert sunlight to chlorophyll remember you were taught in basic biology yes light we draw sunlight and men on earth will die because there will no longer be plants there will no longer be food and it's mysterious that this light you see is older than everybody on earth yet it does not diminish in glory the light of the sun remains fixed never to diminish your cloth will diminish 
even your own face will diminish under normal circumstances but this sun has remained constant this light you see is a mystery till today science cannot define light they can only describe it using numerical figures light is a mystery it was outsourced from the realm of the spirit are we together now the first thing god released upon the earth was light let there be light let there be element number one number two sound sound it is because of the presence of sound that words can move and can be heard am i right on that is that true as powerful as words are they are only as powerful as the sound that conveys them this is very important when you read ezekiel chapter 47 for sake of time you will see there ezekiel said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound you see sound playing a role there in acts chapter 2 and verse 1 now when the day of pentecost was fully come the bible says they were all gathered in one place the first thing that happened is suddenly there came a sound sound the supernatural will never find expression until there is the element of sound It's amazing that people can come here sick people can come here oppressed and all those spirits are hearing and all the conditions are quiet until sound comes in the name of Jesus Christ the man who was seated at gate beautiful his miracle was sound dependent he was there for many years but here comes an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ silver and gold I do not have but such as I have give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and work that sound the Bible says he lifted the man and he leaping stood you have that down number three fire <laughs> the power of God manifests itself through the element and the conduit of fire I wish I had time. I'm so sorry I'm compressing this. This thing that I've taught you can become a one month lecture, back to back every day. I can break every one of these facets, but this is just to give us a general appreciation of power. Fire. Remember in Exodus chapter 3, that was the element that God used to draw the attention of Moses. A bush that was burning and yet would not be consumed. Is that in your Bible? Moses fire the element of fire fire till today is still a very mysterious we give it all kinds of definitions can you imagine set fire in this place you can't hold it you can't box it it will burn everything in front of it fire does not fear fire does not run away you can't put it in your pocket what kind of element is that? It is so light, you can set it anywhere. It is not so heavy, yet it will burn anything on earth. In fact, the judgment on earth will happen through fire. Fire is a mysterious element that reduces everything to its unit. Listen carefully fire reduces everything to its unit everything bring your car as wonderful as it is go and throw it into a blast furnace and watch that car become like a piece of paper fire is a deep mystery you watch a beautiful building let that building catch fire the only thing that will be left is just the skeletal structure of that building fire on the day of pentecost after the sound the next thing that came was fire fire it came and sat on their head and jesus said there are two kinds of baptisms that will happen to you he will baptize you with the holy ghost you know as i just mentioned fire i just saw like just fire just he will baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The baptism of fire is a different kind of baptism on its own. Like fire in your bones. Listen, 
the supernatural only finds expression when it wants to find especially when God is revealing himself as a warrior and one who is coming in judgment his power is it comes through that conduit of fire number four for sake of time earth hmm. this one is a very mysterious element the earth look at me number one the earth is a universal point of contact that means everybody on earth what joins a point of contact means that I can guarantee that everybody is standing upon the earth the earth is a universal point of contact number two this earth you see all of the food that man eats to live comes from the earth this is a very deep mystery when men die we do not throw them in the air to float we bury them in the earth and after many years if you go back there all you will find is skeleton and sand not skeleton and liver not skeleton and eyes every other thing that is not bones is reduced to dust it says for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return do you know the meaning of that we depend on the earth literally for our survival because the plants the trees that feed us come from the earth are we together now yes so the prophet will say oh earth hear ye the word of the lord hear ye the word of the lord there is something in the bible called famine that at times of famine even the earth does not produce are we together the earth something happens to the earth something is spoken to the earth that stops it from producing and everybody starts suffering the bible says even because the earth failed money failed and men came in egypt and said buy us this earth you see is a mysterious substance the oil that has caused war across nations the earth agriculture that feeds nations the earth real estate that looks like the ultimate store of value the earth real estate is not the sky real estate is the earth imagine how expensive a piece of earth is some of us have been looking for it all around this city and even though you see it plenty your portion has not yet come to you because there is a mystery that brings you to your portion of the earth do you believe what I'm telling you yes. when you move to America respectfully or you move to um, UK or you move to France you are simply moving from one part of the earth to another you are still in the earth is that true there are possibilities that are locked up within the earth and this is where because of the awareness of what I have told you there are people who have erroneously moving out of the way the Holy Spirit teach they've started manipulating things within the earth you see because they know that there is a dimension of God's power invested in the earth and that the earth is one of the conduits for the supernatural Jesus himself in trying to open the eyes of a blind man he spat on the ground is that true and he mixed it with clay and put it in his eyes and said go and wash at a pool called Siloam why would Jesus do that the prophets were eating the food that came from the earth and they said ah there is death in the pot it came from the earth agriculture we have all kinds of soils in fact the Bible even calls us earthen vessels earthen vessels that the best of us no matter how well decorated is an earthen vessel are we together now this is very powerful and number five for the sake of our teaching tonight the fifth conduit by which the power of God is transmitted to the saints water I can spend the whole night teaching you on this mysterious entity called water I'm not teaching the worship of these things I'm educating your mind to understand how the supernatural happens this water you see is a very deep mystery Genesis 1 from verse 20 to 22 water is associated with abundance 
Genesis 1 and God said let's read together <laughs> let the waters bring forth abundantly stop let the waters do what so the water is like a woman she can be pregnant and she can give birth to certain things abundance let the water why didn't God say let abundance come after all he said let there be light why would God instruct waters to bring forth abundance in the earth let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life the fowl of the air can you imagine these birds you see where did they come from it's in your Bible 21 <laughs> some of you are wondering why did I come to church today and God created the great whales and every living creature that moved which the waters brought forth abundantly which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every wing fall after its kind and God saw that what the waters produced was good look at me 70% of the earth thereabout is water am I right on that same with the human body no matter how healthy you are be starved of water for a while let everything still be fine in your body you will die isn't it a mystery I want you to take water and look at it in your hands and you will respect God in a new way what is this thing called water now the thing about water that is mysterious is that we found it here every bottle of water you are drinking you are not the first to drink it hmm. water has access to every human body the water you are drinking today <laughs> ah. how in the world the bottle you are using you are the first to use it but the water inside is as a result of evaporation and condensation did they not teach you in agriculture biology and science something called the water circle am i right on that evaporation condensation and the process repeats itself again my question is who else drank it before you listen you go and now ask apostle john why he said there are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word are we together and what the father and that all these three agree then when it comes to the earth it says there are three witnesses that means <laughs> no let let's let's just let's just forget about that let me just teach you what is my curriculum to teach you this night and then we'll pray the spirit the water and the blood that means there is an information in what you are carrying the Bible calls it a witness when your body is dirty you don't use oil no matter what else you use it takes water mysteriously to cleanse your body watch this no matter what jam you put in water no matter what dirt you put in water the water is not intimidated it can evaporate and leave the dirt there isn't this mysterious that people who travel outside of space scientists will tell you they survive so long because they recycle every water there water is mysterious it cannot be stained you can never stain water with dirt you can never stain water with germs no matter what virus you put there you just allow light on that water and it will rise and leave the trouble there this is a mystery that many of you have not studied so you drink water and then your thirst is quenched am I right on that and then after a while you go and use the toilet you ease yourself and everything is gone and all of a sudden you find out that there's a deluge of water coming from the sky again I am telling you you are not the first to drink the water in fact every water in your body is older than you it had to be older than you to be formed it had to be older than you to be born just use your mind the church is a place of intelligence are we together wow 
No wonder the devil can sit down and in the villages they will program all kinds of things in water. And all of a sudden, you find out that people's lives become a, all kinds of destructive things because of water. I'm not teaching you to go and idolize water. I'm just showing you that these five elements, they are mysterious elements that science has not even exhausted. Plants depend on it. Men depend on it. Everything on earth depends on water. Take away water from the earth and everything fails. Everything dries. There is something called drought, the absence of water within a predefined geographic area and it causes both men and animals to die. So the Bible says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high in the similitude of water, Isaiah 32 and verse 15, it says, then the, the wilderness that is bankrupt of water will be a fruitful field. Is that in your Bible? And a fruitful field will be counted for forest. So the Spirit of God can come in the similitude of water. If I speak over your life and I say in the name of Jesus be blessed, you are hearing it, that's why you can say amen. It is true sound. Are we together now? This is very powerful. When you are about to eat and you say, Father, thank you for this food. That was the combination of light, the combination of the earth, the combination of fire. Am I right on that? The meal on your table, what and what led to it? It's the same elements we are talking about. That's why it nourishes you. What you are eating on your table is light, <laughs> fire, water. Listen, you are my people and I'm teaching you something about the power of God. Uh, I will not go somewhere and go and share that. I'm teaching you because I will still come back again to teach and clear your confusion. But I am telling you, if you ever see the supernatural manifest anywhere in the Bible, these five elements were present. So, I wish we had time, we would have checked all these five elements in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he says, now the earth was void and formless, and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the, the face of the, the face of the, verse 2. And God said, let there be, you see light there? And there was light. Verse 4 now. And he saw that the light was good. And he divided the light from darkness. Verse 5. And the light he called day. The darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. This is God creating now. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse 7. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Verse 8, it says, And God called the firmament above heaven. The firmament in the earth, you know, that one he called seas and the rest. Verse 9, we'll find somewhere to pray. He said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. He's still talking water and dry land. Say earth. Say earth. Are you seeing these elements now? And the dry land appeared and it was so. Verse 10. It says, And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. When you read 11, you can read on and on. And God said, The earth that has now formed, now bring forth vegetation. The grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after it. And you can keep on like that like that like that you keep seeing all of these manifestations every time the supernatural comes it comes through these five conduits they are mysterious elements they do not belong to the earth they were outsourced into the earth that's why none none of these five things experience death light does not die because it is not mortal hmm. listen carefully Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Sound does not die. Is that true? The earth does not die. Fire does not die. Water does not die. All five of these elements, 
death has no power over them. If they were earthbound and they were mortal, there would be a way of bringing them to an end. You can't bring light to an end. You can't bring sound to an end. No, you can only stop it from walking within a room. Demon spirits know this. Back again to our herbalist people as we round up. Every time you go to a herbalist, this is the same combination you see. Earth, water, light, then words are spoken. The words is still sound. It's just that unfortunately, this is, is a satanic thing that is done to... to you, are, are we getting the point now? It is not an invention of the herbalist. It is a manipulation of the laws of God. Now, today as believers, it is not necessary to speak to sound, to speak to water. Look at me. It is not necessary to speak to light. I'm not teaching you to do that. All of the powers that were invested in those elements have today been transferred and put in a name. Listen carefully now. Are we together? So the Bible says, Wherefore, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. It says that at the name of Jesus, now you will know what every knee must bow. The knee is not the knee of man. The knee is the knee of things. It's in your Bible. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. And then it says every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That means the power that is in the name of Jesus, watch this, the power that God put in water, the power he put in fire, the power he put in light, all of these powers have now, they reside within the office of the Christ. When God gives you the name, he's given you dominion over water, over fire, over elemental forces. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So you do not need to go and fetch water or fetch fire or fetch all of these things. Now, I know there is a place of prophetic action, communion and water, whatever it is. I am not saying it's intrinsically wrong, but I'm saying as the believer today, understand when you see people use water and all of that, it is not that what they are doing is not correct. It is that there is a superior approach that is given to the believer now. Are we together? That all of that has been invested in the name of Jesus. So I do not need to go and consult with water and say, water, you have abundance. Give it to me. That abundance is in the name of Jesus. What I would have done before to now sit down and say, water, bring me abundance. Fire, bring me abundance. Light, bring me abundance. I can say in the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. Open up the power in the earth that makes it to yield will make my destiny yield because it's now been invested in the name of Jesus. Are you getting that now? It's important to understand this so that you will now understand what the Bible means by saying the sun shall not smite you by day. How does the sun smite you? Who uses light to smite you? Evil spirits. But because you have the name of Jesus, you can speak and say in the name of Jesus, no weapon fashioned against me, whether by light, whether by water, anybody who takes your name to a herbalist. You don't also need to go and carry water or fire. Now, I'm not pleased with all due respect to the body of Christ. Every man of God is at liberty to practice whatever revelation he has. I'm not by this. Let me put a disclaimer. I'm not insulting or downplaying or demeaning. No, 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 no. I'm teaching you the truth as superior revelations from the word of God. Are we together? I have acknowledged that these are elements that were created by God and that there is a dimension of God's power resident within them and that they are conduits for manifesting the supernatural. But the advantage that the believer has in Christ today is this name we have been given. Now you will respect what was put in the name of Jesus. So here's what he says, silver and gold I do not have. In other words, I can't tell you go and wash in Siloam. I can't tell you go and do this, but such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus. The name that has that power. 
I will not need to say wait in Bethesda until the stirring of the water. When the angel came in John 5, he stirred the water and whoever entered the water was healed. Jesus himself put sand in someone's eyes. I don't need to go and start putting sand in people's eyes today to be healed. Are we together? All I need to do is to speak over your job, speak over your life, provided it is in the name of Jesus. I release that power. So, when I am walking my laws, learning all the laws that bring prosperity, when I bring the name of Jesus to those laws, I empower them to produce. On their own, there is a dimension of God's power. But now, added to it, I have said in the name of Jesus, whether you pray on the food you are eating or not, it already carries health within it. But now, I give thanks. Because there is a devil, there is an enemy who can also manipulate these spiritual laws. Listen to me, believers. The greatest investment you have for your victory is that name. The power was invested in the name. Jesus went through all of these things and today we do not need to consult mediums or consult elements to get power. The most superior approach for the believer is to understand the power that is in the name of Jesus. When I get up in the morning and I see the sun shine, I know that it's empowering plants and animals and all of that. But listen to me, even if I remain in darkness for one year, I still will not die because there is a name. Are we together? The effect of what that son would have done, that name can do to me. Are we together now? Yes. I do not need to go and bath seven times, respectfully speaking, like Naaman, except if it comes as a prophetic instruction from God. But classically, as I'm speaking to you, that the believer's advantage today is in the name. Healing in the name. Prosperity in the name. Lifting in the name. Speed in the name. Even the communion that you take is in the name. The communion itself does not have any power. It is the name that is invested in it that empowers it. Otherwise, you are just taking maybe a, a drink and all of that. The anointing oil that you hold, it came from a plant connected to the earth, connected to water, connected to light. The anointing oil on its own does not bring you any miracle except the name is invested on it. Is someone learning? So if I forget an anointing oil at home and say ah, i don't have an anointing oil don't worry did you forget the name that is the trouble many have carried the oil and forgotten the name mary carried water and forgot the name are we together now now i'm saying this to help the body of christ when in the school of power listen when it has to do with power thank god for water thank god for light thank god for all of these things but the name of Jesus Christ has been exalted above everything and it's been given to the believer as an inheritance. When you have that name, with it you will command strange possibilities. And watch this, that name is able to manipulate even elemental forces to walk towards the favor of God's people. In other words, I can stand and speak over an atmosphere where there's drought and say rain. In the name of Jesus, I declare you begin to fall on this land. That rain will obey me. Why? Because I'm coming in the name of Jesus. Jesus is not a creation. He's not a creature. He is the creator himself. Is somebody understanding what I taught you tonight? God has all power. Now he's given Joshua Selman that power. I will not go and stand in front of a river, respectfully speaking, to consult and say, what will my destiny look like? Now, I'm not insulting you. If that is the pathway you choose, that is fine. But there is a more superior way that in the name of Jesus, I can say by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost was given to me to lead me and guide me to understand the ways of God. And I can walk in it and walk with exactitude and precision. Are we together now? Yes. I can say in the name of Jesus, help us to find out the cure for this and that. And God himself, watch this, can lead you to those elements. Now, please hear me. I need to balance this as we wrap up. I am not teaching that engaging any of these elements in itself is sin. The inventions that we get in our hospital is God leading men back to the trees to combine formulas that treat malaria, 
that treat all of this. Are we together now? Yes. There are times I've prayed for people on water. There are times I've prayed for people on their oil. There's, there are times that people come by faith. They just hold a bag of sand and say, Apostle, pray on this sand. There's no time explaining anything to them. Their faith has been connected to it. I just lay my hands and say, in Jesus' name, go in peace. Because when they come and as they keep learning the ways of God, they will now see that there is a more superior approach. By this teaching, you should not go down and start insulting people and say, see what you are doing. You are still using oil and water and that. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I will still use oil on you. I will still use whatever it is that God leads. But I am telling you that the power is not in the oil. Now, today, my confidence is not anointing oil. My confidence is not water. My confidence is not communion set. As wonderful as that is. Are we together now? Yes. My confidence is in the name of Jesus. If I lay my hands on that oil and you use it and it produces results, it is not because of the oil itself. It is because of the name of Jesus. Anybody who does not know Jesus will have to depend on those elements on their own and then sadly for many in partnership with demon spirits. Now, witchcraft operates in this manner. These spirits understand how to manipulate these formulas and they come and meet men. They said there is a cure for something in the village. Bow to me and I will show you the cure. So someone will come and bow to the devil and you say combine this leaf and combine that leaf. And the person will start doing it and start providing solution. And you'll be called the herbalist in the city and you'll make money from it. Like the lady with the spirit of divination. It brought money to their people. You would have called that prosperity. But when someone came in the name of Jesus... He said in the name of Jesus and he seized control of that and an end came to that. Anybody who uses the sun, anybody who uses fire, anybody who uses water against you is only wasting their time. That only works if you do not understand the power in the name. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? With the name that you have, you do not fear manipulations of water, manipulations of this. So there can be water spirits, there can be demon spirits, there can be all kinds of spirits in the air, there can be manipulations with fire. But my confidence is that I'm coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what is conjured against me, that no enchantments against Jacob, I don't need to also go and start pouring water and drink. No, no, I've become an herbalist. That will even become an embarrassment to the authority of that name. How many people have the name here? When you come into Christ, among the many things that you are given is that name. Access to that name. But it works by revelation. It works by revelation. Watch this. If a herbal stands now and pours water in front of your compound and is shouting, some, some, someone, and pours water and throws it away, you should not get afraid and say, hey, he even held water. No, remember what I've taught you. They are playing with all these five elements, but you have the name of Jesus. You have authority over that thing. Now, you know what happened that Benson Idahosa, I think he was, or one of these people, when they slaughtered an animal and kept it in front of him, they went and cooked it and, and ate it or so. If you use any of these elements, some of you go to your offices and you see blood, pepper, salt, all kinds of demonic things, and you panic and run away. No. Remember, these are elements. And they are only as powerful as your ignorance allows them. Now, the name of Jesus that he's given you, listen, with one command, with authority. Now, if you don't know what I have taught you and you are just shouting, in Jesus' name, you will waste your time and that charm will work. Let me tell you the truth. Many people have not got this revelation and they've just carried bold face for nothing and they died like chickens. The strength of the name of Jesus is not in pronouncing it like a chant. It's in the understanding. This is what gives us confidence. Hallelujah. I have held many charms with my hands. Many. Usually when people want to, when people are repenting or confessing, they carry all these charms that they got from several places. And I say, bring it to me. Because they don't know what to do with it. And they've warned them, if you keep it in your house, it will be the negative version of the act of of God in the house of Obed-Edom. And so I said, bring it. I know what to do with it. 
tear that nonsense into pieces and throw it away. I will not do that just by bold face. It will kill you. Listen, I'm saying this to you because I want you to walk out of this place knowing that I have power. As you obey the laws of the kingdom, expect it to work for you. The laws of prosperity, the law of honor, all of these laws. But in addition, know that I have the name of Jesus. And whatever spirit wants to manipulate my life and destiny, I can stand in the name of Jesus and speak. That everybody who has used water against me, anybody who has used the sun against me, anybody who has used the earth to make pronouncement, I stand in the name of Jesus and I declare that it, the effect is nullified. That is the prayer we are going to pray for one minute. Can we pray that prayer for one minute? Rise up everybody. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every manipulation from the air, from fire, from water, from the earth against my life and my destiny in the name of Jesus, let it be nullified now. Open your mouth and pray in one minute. I come by a superior manifestation of power. Power over the earth. Power over elemental forces. Power over water. Power over trees. Power over the sun. Someone pray. They only work to my advantage and not to my destruction. They only work to my advantage and not to my destruction. They only work to my advantage and not to my destruction. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. Give me a minute and we're done. Hear me. So the Bible says, if they drink any deadly thing, is that in your Bible? That someone puts poison in water and say, let him take it and die. There is a covenant you have that you can even, it's not about just avoiding to drink it. Whether you drink it, that there is something the name does. Are we together? Yes. The same way water separates itself from death and it can live. You will be surprised that you are, it means water should not kill anybody. There are diseases called airborne, waterborne. You see, it ought not to be so because that air and water was created for the advantage of the believer, but manipulated by demons. I should not drink water and die. I should not eat food and die. They were not for my destruction. They were manipulated by the devil. No wonder the prophet said there is death in the pot. Today, right now, the devil has manipulated all kinds of foods. And now you almost don't know what to eat again. Because it looks like there is death in everything. Fear not. Walk within the advice of medical doctors. But can I tell you, shout the name of Jesus on that plate. And eat well. And go to bed. Are we together? Yes. I can go somewhere and get the water. I don't know who produced it. I don't know his covenant with the devil, but from the time it entered my house, loyalty changed. The bag of rice that comes to my house, I don't know who said it. In fact, if somebody prepares some, I'm saying this because there is so much fear in believers. Who prepared this? Who put this? Ah, I'm about to die. You are going to live a frustrated Christian life that way. It is the evil you know that you fight. What of the one you do not know? There are many believers who cannot do. It's out of fear. Somebody innocently can give you a wristwatch and say, uh-huh, you see, he gave me a wristwatch. This is a programming for delay. Please. Please. And you may be right. But what is the advantage of your presence? What is the advantage of the name? There are many restaurants that we may go and eat in. You don't know what the people believed. You can't sit in fear all the days of your life. Apostle, what if somebody wants to kill me? It's not what if. There is somebody on earth that wants to kill you. For sure. I can tell you that for free. Your immunity is in the name. Your immunity. This is a summary of my message. We're in the school of power. 
your immunity is in the name that for as long as you stand in that name no divination and no enchantment and you can speak to elemental forces and i assure you by god that they will obey you give jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah let me make the altar call next time you go to visit somebody and he says what did you bring for me tell them i brought a name you mean you didn't bring even a bag of water? Now I'm saying, respect elders and carry all these things. But with it, add a name. And tell them, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings upon this family. And walk away. By next week, they'll call you back and say, please speak again. Whatever you said last week started changing things. Are we together now? You are here and you've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. The name will not work for you. The name of the Lord is only for believers who are in Christ. And perhaps while you heard me teach, the Lord began to speak to you to say, make it right with Jesus. Our time is fast spent. Power, genuine power, resides only with an encounter with Jesus. The power that comes with laws and principles like you have learned is limited. I'm about to count one to five. I know that our time is fast spent, but for the sake of one person who wants to make it right with Jesus, I do not want this service to end without giving you that opportunity. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand in front here. I begin my counting now. One, come. Come. God bless you. God bless you. These are not the only ones. Come. Gentlemen, make it right with Jesus. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Celebrate men and women who are about to have access to the name. The name that is above every other name. Above every other name. Above sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. If you are joining them, please come quickly. I want to lead them to pray right now. You are joining them, please come quickly. If you don't pray the prayer, you are not saved. Remember. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, say this after me. Lift your right hand. Let me request, please. Lift your right hand. God bless you. Thank you for the boldness to come. It's never too late to make it right with Jesus. Say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over me from tonight and forever I am a child of God saved by the blood of the lamb amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones the bible declares that as many who will come to him you will no wise despise and cast away i decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and tonight begins a new season in your life you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus matchless name we pray Amen and amen. Please let me request that you move to my right, which will be your left. You have a word very quickly with the counselors, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Are you celebrating them? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life that this name you have, you have found as an inheritance. Let it work wonders this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. And like we have learned, anybody who tries to use elemental forces against you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes 
are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.